Shrine podcast has begun. Tip's here, and he doesn't even have to say hi, but you can say hi. What's up, everybody? He is a sight for sore ears this week. I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad to be doing this and not shitty work that's been filling up this week. It's, how, it's giving my ears a break. Yeah, you sound tired. And there's nowhere else I'd rather be, and I'm really excited for this episode, actually, because we need to go into the questions. We got a big old backlog of these questions. I've been looking forward to it. But I've been thinking about something else, too. Uh, most of this episode is probably going to be about Jade, because, you know, Jade was the big shit. Uh, she was an- she, she was announced. I just rewatched her trailer. Seemed like she had some divisive uh, feedback from from audiences. I don't know. Um, I didn't know but, that. Really? Has it been divisive? Well, I'm I just maybe not. Okay, I'm not trying to punch this story up. It sounds like that. I'm not trying to like clickbait anybody. I uh, they create drama where there is none. I thought there were different thoughts about her outfits, her design, her looks, and the skins they showed and stuff like that. But maybe not. I don't know. But um. I wish we talked about this sort of thing more often. This was fun. I was watching ketchup and mustards videos, um, and they had one. I think it was like they went over variations. It was a really recent one, I think. Yeah, I think like custom- yesterday or officially the uh, two days ago now, given this recording. Yeah, so like you know that that that's the one that I saw that clued me into this. They got my brain got my brain on uh, Mortal Kombat Eleven is the first Mortal Kombat. And this franchise's 26-year history to have proper hit stops. They didn't do this World Combat X, and they haven't done it before. And I went double-checked. It's true. And hip stop, hit, hit stops are something that I I like them. I like the way they make things feel. And World Combat's never done them. I'm not sure why. Well, for our audience, tell us what a hit stop is. That's what I was just thinking. That's probably a good idea. Hit stops. <laughs> hit stops are at the first frame where an attack connects it doesn't matter if it's hit or blocked the attack connects both players freeze both players for a certain number of frames the number of frames that they freeze varies uh going from game to game but that that stop is there to do a number of things it's in street fighter is the easiest example to go to but it's in i think it's in every fighting game now that mortal kombat has caught up yes yeah, street fighter killer instinct all these games Check them out and have them. They they have them and they're interesting because in Street Fighter they help with like, what is it, links? And it gives you a little bit more time to do combos after you confirm. It helps with hit confirms. But that's not what the effect was initially for and that's not what it's always there for. It's just for a, you know, if nothing else, like a chunky feel. Like it it makes the hits feel more solid and and chunky um, because things stop. And it's only for a couple frames. It's very small. It's a super interesting thing, and it's something that I've thought Mortal Kombat's been lacking for a long time. It's something that really helps feelings of impact. And MKX really didn't have that at all, and MKX suffered for a lot of different reasons because of that. Because of the lack of hit stops, because of their animation style, um, a lot of things just felt weightless in that game, and it didn't feel great. That was kind of a transitioning period for them, I think, animation-wise in general in a lot of ways. But they'd still never done uh, proper hit stops ever before. So it's really interesting that they chose this game to be the first time to do it. Very interesting. And I would I would love to know why that is. But I hadn't heard anybody else talk about this. That really, that really surprised me. But it's cool. What do you think made them have a change of heart? Dude, I don't... That, that's That's what I've been scratching my head about. Like, I would love to know why it's in there. I don't know, but that and the reduced emphasis on combos and stuff like that in Mortal Kombat 11, um, you know, it, it's weird. It's weird. The things like flawless block and all this stuff that's things that I don't that Mortal Kombat hasn't really done, and I'm wondering why now is the time that they're wanting to do it. Would love to pick Paolo's brain about this because it feels like his vision is a little different than it ever has been before. Is that it? it are hit stops anything that you feel strongly about or have any opinions? I don't feel like it's ever been an impediment for my gameplay. I don't. I, I honestly don't even think about it, to tell you the truth. Um, I only have a casual understanding of what they are, mostly from what I've heard from you. But no, I don't really feel like it's affected me much. And just playing a lot of MK9, I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, maybe I'll feel the difference once once I play the beta. But I do play a lot of Street Fighter, though. I'll, m- oh. Many versions of Street Fighter. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Street Fighter's always had it since the beginning of forever. And like I said, it's not just fighting games. You can, like, 
tons and tons and tons of action games use it too. Like it's just a, a a nice thing that you're not necessarily supposed to like super notice because it's only a few frames, but it's I don't know. It has a very interesting effect. Um, I, I, we've been doing some experiments with it at the in the iBallistic lab recently, and uh, the difference is really, really, really interesting. It's something that I pushed for and we're tooling around with. It's fun. It's interesting for World Combat 11 because it's it's like why why now? It's 26 year long thing you guys have never done them. Why now? And and you can say that about a lot of different things with World Combat 11. Unfortunately, I don't know. We have to get fucking Paolo on here, dude. We got to figure this shit out. I will say this one question I've been getting a lot since this game was revealed is what should I play to prepare for MK11? I think everyone agrees not MKX. I don't think learning MKX is going to help no. you much with this game. No. Um, some people are saying MK9. I don't... I. It's better. I think you're better off learning MK9 for this game than you would be, say, learning uh, MKX, but I've been playing Street Fighter 4. That's been my training regiment for getting ready for this game. That's mostly what I've been doing. Because it's, it's for two reasons. One, is I'm trying to clean up my one-frame links to help me prepare for the timing on a on flawless block. That's one thing that I've been focusing a lot on. I've been doing that almost two hours a night. Not necessarily because I, I think it's going to help me, but just because I, I enjoy doing that anyway. One of the things I pride myself is is on execution. But another reason is I'm trying to relearn how to incorporate my offense into walking forward, which is a very Street Fighter Four thing. Um, more so than any other Street Fighter, because in, in five... I think I think the, the the walking mindset's very different in five because I think five is more about explosive offense once you get in, and just trying to mix up your dashes and your jumpins, uh, which are a lot more potent in that game. Street Fighter Four walking forward is much more, in my opinion, more powerful and more rewarding. So that's kind of my big training regimen right now. It's just it's hard to find competition in Street Fighter Four because um, dudes either don't want to play you at this at this age in the game. People are very particular on who they fight, or you'll find a dude with like an 18% disconnect rating. And I just, I don't have time for that. Um, so that's kind of my strategy right now. So I probably will learn to appreciate hit stops once I have the game in my hands. But um, right now, it's just not something I'm really conscious of at the time. It's, uh. And you can also chalk it up to a. <sighs> Like, it might just be, like, you know, just an aesthetic thing, like a feel thing. Like, maybe it's just a a, a, a look or something that they that they, that they they liked. Um, and it's definitely nowhere near as exaggerated in um, Mortal Kombat 11 as it is for Street Fighter. Um, Street Fighter, like, like man, once you're, like, looking for it, it's like, oh, it's, it's fucking everywhere. It's all over the place. Uh, it, in Mortal Kombat 11, I don't think I saw it for any more than, like, I don't know, like, three frames two three frames maybe um but you know it's enough to be like okay it's definitely there and it's interesting um and yeah i'm just really looking forward to seeing how that changes the way the game feels like is there any impact on the way that on the way the game feels because it's never had it before it's uh you know every new mortal kombat game is always a brand new mortal kombat game they always fucking like shake things up from game to game and uh, this one's not any different but there's a lot of different this time there's a it's well I have a theory about this game and why it is so different yeah I think and this is just a theory I'm not saying this is true but about a year and a half ago Netherrealm Studios went over to Osaka to, to visit Capcom Japan and said hey we still really want to do the Street Fighter thing with Mortal Kombat and they said okay we're interested, but we need to see we need to see something on the table. We want to know what it's going to look like. We don't just want to you know sign the paperwork and then you make some shitty game, right? Because um, they played MKX, they know. So, <laughs> but, so what happened is I think they made a really good prototype, and you know Capcom Japan was like, "This is awesome. This is great. We love this." They're like, "Okay, well, in 2022 or 2023, we're in." We'll, we'll, we'll make something that makes everyone happy. And then they got back to Chicago and were like, well, what do we do with this prototype? And they're like, I don't know. And they made MK11. That's what I think may have happened. I think something like that is very plausible, which is why I would not be surprised to see Akuma as a guest character. But we'll see. 
listen, I like your theory a lot. I like your theory a lot. Um, that's a, but that 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 theory is dangerous. That's a heartbreaker of a theory. I mean, um, I, I went either way because I planned on making MK11 my 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 stopping grounds until something better arrives. It's no longer hinging on the next game anymore, so I, I don't need another MK game after this. No, at least in um, theory. But I mean, you know, there obviously there, there are tons of people that are, that just like you know want to see the mashup because people have always wanted to see the mashup since the nineties, fucking two big nineties, uh, you know, fighting games and whatnot. Street Fighter vs. Mortal Kombat is the fucking dream. Is that going to happen? Um, well, I say a year and a half ago for a very important reason. is because okay. this is pre-Monster Hunter. Like, this was not even in the realm six months ago because they mm-hmm. had all that, that awesome yeah. Monster Hunter, Hunter money. Now yeah. they have all that RE2 remake money. They're doing good now. But a year and a half ago, they were hurting pretty badly. So they're like, all right, Ed Boon, what do you got? And that's when the basement deal started to kind of come together. That's what I think happened. I don't know. No, maybe, you know, the dollar dues have kind of flowed in and, and maybe that changed some minds. This could all be bullshit. I don't fucking know. But it's just no, I, I think I mean, a year and a half ago, they, they, were, they, they were close to going under a few years ago. They were really hurting some time ago. So I'm wondering. Yeah. I, I, I mean, listen, we all we all went through Marvel Infinite together. Um, and we're all still going through Street Fighter V together. Like, the, like, you know, that game just doesn't stop finding new ways to uh, ruffle jimmies. Um, well, this is Street Fighter V is sort of rebounded now, but back a year and a half ago, dude, that game was in a very deep swimming pool of shit. People were really upset with that game. And the thing that probably at least Capcom USA kept hearing is why can't you make good good games like NetherRealm? Why can't you make a better story mode? Why do I have to wait six months to see Bison, you know, talk to talk, talk to Nash? I don't get it. You know, why is there only 17 fucking characters on the base roster? Yeah. Um, well, it was more than that with the unlocks, but you get the idea. So yeah. that, that's a big problem. And um, and they're like, okay, everyone loves another realm. Everyone hates us. Maybe it's time <laughs> to have a conversation. Now, like I said, a lot has changed since January 2018, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know what was going on then either. I don't know anything, but no. this is my thing. And, uh, no one knows what's going on with Capcom. I mean, I mean Cap- Capcom right now, like, we talked about it last week, the stuff with the uh, Street Fighter Five DLC for Season 4? Maybe Season 4 or just Season 3? I don't remember which one. As we speak, Evo Japan is happening right now. So it's possible right. the big reveal is going to happen in less than 48 hours, but I don't... I mean, Ono is not attending EVO Japan. I think they made uh-uh. it very clear, so that's not a good sign. However, no. they, they've done reveals without Ono in the past, but I don't think anything of the scale. Like, like a new set of characters, unless they're going to reveal, like, fucking, like, Violent Kage or some shit like that, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. That wasn't no. true. <laughs> nope, I liked it. It was good. It was good. Uh, I need to play Kage at some point, man. I'm down. Yeah, let me know when. I I have him. I should at least play him a little. Um, I don't know. I, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time from a scientific place. I I don't I don't know I I don't know why uh, hit stops get me hype. Um, I could watch fucking. I could watch. Fighting game hitboxes all day long. I can actually watch hitboxes with any game all day long. Just give me some popcorn and watch just the hitboxes go at each other. Man, I would love to be able to like sit down and like either watch or play the new God of War and just have it with hitboxes only. You don't see any other graphics, just gray levels and like you know gray box levels and the fucking hit boxes going around you know humping each other and shit like that sounds fucking great to me oh dark souls bloodborne that would be that would be tight but you know i don't know i mean it gets me i'm a weird it's a movie i don't know i like that shit. i don't think it, it's weird it, it, it gets, gets me it gets me 3d hit boxes oh yeah 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 read those th- uh, like from what said here uh 3d hit boxes in mortal Kombat uh, and injustice because they both have them i don't even it's it's perverse but I want to see it I don't care how 
I shouldn't see it. No one should see it. Cover the kids' eyes, but I want to see it. I would like to respond to two comments in the chat so far. One is, uh, Temp, are you hyped for DOA 6? Um, hyped is the wrong word. I'm happy it's coming out. I look forward to playing it. But, um, I guess my brain is elsewhere right now. Uh, just, um, I mean, I'm very MK11 centric at the moment, but I am really looking forward to it. I do plan on playing it a lot. I'm trying to move up my certification test so I can get out of the way and play DOA. That's that's the goal, but we'll, I mean, we'll see how tonight goes. I'm supposed to be studying after this. Um, the other thing I want to respond to is uh, Araman said uh, Capcom will probably reveal stuff at E3 or EVO. It's possible, but that means either June or August. Um, I don't think the fans would ever forgive them for that. A lot of fans have already decided they're not going to forgive Capcom, so the the tweet we got in December was more information coming soon. That was December. I, I think many people, myself included, would make the argument that it's over, we're already past soon. Soon ended about 30 days ago. Um, it's almost March, so you can't say something's coming soon in December and then not have anything to show for it up until March or beyond. We may not even get anything then. So Capcom fans, I feel really bad for them right now. I feel really bad for me right now. I thought we were getting more characters. I like that game. I want to play it, but I need a reason to go back. And more importantly, my competitive comrades need a reason to go back. Thankfully, Django's already there. He got his cock. But we'll see. I I, I think revealing something at Evo, if they're going to wait that long, it would have to be something big. Like, they would have to reveal, like, a fucking... Like... A, a, a Q adventure mode or something crazy like that. It would have to be something <laughs> epic, but we'll see. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're good points though. It's definitely very very possible. Man, did you see Q in Resident Evil Two? No, I didn't. He crushed that guy's head. He's fucking stomping around, shit. Oh, you mean Mr. X? Yeah, Mr. Q. He's Q-ish, I guess. Yeah. He's dude. He's hella Q. I, I just I fucking saw that shit and and then you know uh, uh, fucking Ada came along. It's like why is everybody in this game dressed in like uh, Inspector Gadget? Um, it seemed an odd choice, but I, I I'm not an expert on Street Fighter lore, so I'm sure there's more to it than I know. Dude, I was pissed, man. I made a fucking sick ass uh, Resident Evil Mr. X meme, and no one commented on it except for like two dudes. <laughs> So thanks uh, to those it, people, but is that a deep cut? Is are you, are you going too obscure? Listen, man. I didn't think it was that obscure, but that's me. I I'll post know. it in the chat. It's not some big secret or some shit like that. Uh, here Discord we go. Tech. I thought it was funny, but but anyway, um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, <laughs> again, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I mean that you know. But yeah, you heard, you heard the chuckle. It was real. GGS. I'm excited for a lot of things, though. I guess I'm just... I finally got to see my probable main today, so I have a lot to be happy about. And I want to know about that. Um, do you want to you want to talk about some Jade first and then go into questions, yeah, or what? That. Well, you know, another cast land already knows what I think. What do you think about Jade? <laughs> um... Uh, answering questions with a question, hon. I, I like your strats. <laughs> the old tech see. dude fucking... Ooh, you know? Okay. Here's the truth. Um, Jade's got two big problems that she's always had, and it's always been turned off for me personally. Um, one of them is... I fucking talked about it a shit ton. Um, I went back just... Uh, earlier this week, I think, and listen to my um, listen to my uh, character wish list from last year, back when you know we thought Mortal Kombat 11 was going to be revealed at a normal time, and okay. I talked about um, uh, Jade and that thing, and about how it you know, I it it, ir it irks me that she's uh, you know a sometimes staff user and sometimes not, like she doesn't really commit to staff. She's like a staff tourist. Um, okay. That's why. Uh, that's why Tanya made that list. Actually, I had forgotten I put Tanya on a fucking wish list, but I did uh, because of her Dragon Knight Na uh, Naginata style, which was sick. Um, Jade, uh, you know that that's always just rubbed me the wrong way about her. 
She's, uh, you know, she lacks conviction. She doesn't want to stick with the staff. She just, you know, brings it out whenever she's, whenever it's convenient, it's a toy. Um, fucking women. The other thing that bugs me about Jade is, unfortunately, Jade fans and the ever-present uh, controversy about her ethnicity. Um, you, it's hard to have any conversation about Jade where that doesn't come up. And, you know, because of that, like, you know, over time, just by proxy, it sours me on, on, on Jade. And that's not Jade's fault. She's not the one. I mean, it's her fault with the, with the staff. She needs to commit. But uh, the other thing's not her fault. She's fucking just being Jade running around trying to do her thing. And everyone else is like, you know, bugging me. But I like what I'm seeing. In Mortal Kombat 11 of Jade. Um, if people can chill out a little bit, no, no, I, I already went too far because people are not going to chill out a little bit. They're going to keep chilling on a little bit, and she's gray, and people are going to keep talking about. She's like, she, she has another controversial skin color now. Gray washing. So it's just, it's just like, uh, man, you can't fucking get away from it, but. I mean, I feel like I got but... away from it. I feel like I, I, like all the dumb conversations that don't matter in terms of gameplay, or ultimately in terms of even design. I feel like I've kind of successfully withdrawn my stuff myself from that. Um. Then, it, 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 then you got some tech that I need to, I need to download. Um. Because man. Anytime it comes up, I like you know I, I get fucking PTSD of MKO. Like those old days, because I was like, oh, okay, this is what this feels like. I'm back. Uh, and the truth is, you never left, motherfucker. Uh, but if I can go to, into a vacuum where it's just me and Jade, it's nothing fucking, you know, don't get pervy, just me and her, I like what she's doing in this game. And I like the way that her, um, the default look of hers is. I like that a, I like that a lot, actually. And I'm really, really, really happy that characters that are revenants are revenants, like, you know, in their in their defaults. Like, I'm glad that they're committing as far as that goes. I, that's another place that I felt MKX kind of lacked conviction a little bit. Um, if you're going to do the revenant thing and stick with it, then go with it and stick with it. And, you know don't try to like sweep that under the rug or hide that behind something like no this is a this character is revenant right now and that's you know that's part of what's going on with the character it's a big part of the character um go with it and, and use it wield that and i'm glad that some characters are doing that but there's a lot of people that are not glad that some characters are doing that i mean it's it's hard to say because there, there's there's three places where you can go to check for feedback one is the fan sites. Um, then they seem pretty positive. I haven't really scoured all the threads, but so far so good. The other place is our Discord. Again, overall pretty positive. And the third place is where I found most of the negativity, and that was in the Twitch chat for the Combat Cast. Um, and it, we, I see no reason to quote anything I read in there. <laughs> Um, for my safety and for the people I care about. But um, yeah. I think that comes from two places. And I think people are just kind of using Jade as a dartboard because she's what happens to be there. But I think a lot of people are salty about the roster right now, and they're taking it out on Jade. I mean, yeah, obviously, the internet is going to get its dirty words all over the stuff, as they do. Jade just gets a little something extra sometimes because of her. What is she? everyone wants? Like you know what? Everyone's you know they 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 see something different. She's like an ink blot, you know. It's really, which is really interesting to me. See, I always thought that she looked like a, you know, like an Oompa Loompa because she was orange. Um, <laughs> a know, very tall Oompa Loompa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the queen Oompa Loompa. You know, like Queen Smurf, but she's not a Smurf. Uh, or, or you know, she also kind of looked like um, Kim Kardashian shit going on with the like spray-on tan looking shit because she's orange. Even though but, a lot of her Deception facial features are in this game, it, it is tweaked a little bit. In Deception, I feel like her ethnicity was still a little bit more ambiguous 
which I kind of thought was a good thing because that lent, it, that lent itself to the fact that she's from Adenia. You know, it it shouldn't be like a perfect match. Indeed. Of, you know, like a celebrity or something like that. That's, that doesn't really make sense. But this works too, as long as they don't throw away the, the deception facial qualities completely. Yeah, this works. This is good. First and foremost, she is an alien. She's an alien. She's not <laughs> She's not African. She's not Asian. She's not uh, Central American, South African. South American. Uh, she is an alien, and that's okay. She kind of, I'm just looking at her now and I just thought about it. She kind of reminds me at a glance of um, uh, Martian Manhunter's like niece or whatever the fuck. Yeah. What's her name? Miss Martian. Is that her name, Miss Martian? I think so. Yeah. That sounds good. Sure. Yeah, Miss Martian. Uh, just fucking make her hair red and boom, you're off to the fucking shit. I don't know why. May well, her skin's not actually green. It's her green clothes that are making her gray skin seem green at a glance. It's a trick. I'm sorry. In the render, it looks green. I'll be honest with you. In the render, it does look green to me, but it's it's a different uh, hue of green. It's much more washed out, but it, it does look green to me in the render. In the game, I, I'd have to watch it again. In this conversation, made me realize I would like to play Miss Martian in the future Injustice. They should they, they should have her. Uh, I don't want Martian Manhunter back because I really like Martian Manhunter, but that dude was crazy he was, busted. he was crazy dude like i i don't even know what that dude was doing in that game that guy was i could at least understand what scorpion was doing like i don't even know what i was getting hit with i don't even well I mean, I, injustice one is old enough now where i think we can finally all agree that that game is unplayable like i think no one really could see it back then because it the backdrop for injustice one was mk9 and people were so happy they didn't have to worry about Nomad cancels or 100% combos. We couldn't see just how stupid unbalanced Injustice 1 was, so. It was, I, you know, it's tough though, because Injustice 1 like had a, a more interesting, uh, you know, selection of play styles. You know, that still hasn't really come back. I don't always fucking talk about Maybe, it. Maybe, but- Like Shazam, not... like there was really, really cool. Uh, Shazam, characters like Shazam, characters like Grundy, uh, these things that don't really feel, you know, they, 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 like we've gotten that a, a bunch of in in RS games. I kind of miss them. I feel like even though there's probably there's not one character in Injustice one that's probably as good as Cabal or Cyrax. That said, I feel like there's not there were so many characters that shut down Shazam. He was my main. Like Shazam can't do anything against Zod. It's like I don't <laughs> even. There's no fucking point, right? Yeah, um, I mean, you know. But regardless, in MK9, as unbalanced as it was, I just like the idea that I can move. I like the idea that I, I'm empowered to dash forward, dash backward with, you know, with a, with efficiency right. in, in a way that's effective. I, can't, I don't feel that way at all in Injustice 1. But no. but anyway, spill milk, right? Let's talk about You're absolutely things. right um, about that. Um, are you ready to talk about the nerdy, geeky stuff for uh, Jay? Absolutely. What is some of the... I'm sorry, I don't have my soundboard here with me. Man, you, you made me really wish that I did. I need to get one. What is the geeky fighting game moments? <laughs> well, I, immediately, one thing I like about this character is at mid-screen, is, as long as you read the jumps, you have so much potency with just back one, which, is, which confirms into a special... I'm sorry, that's, that's, I mean, I'm still thinking MK9 mode. Back 2, which replaced your back 1, which is sort of for a multi-poke uh, confirmable chain, which is really tight. Or you can do back 2, which is, uh, or forward 2, which is her overhead chain. So right there, she has a lot of potency, po potency that just, you can already play this really cool game. And on top, and I just feel like she has a cool answer for every distance. And when you're up close, her back 3 chain, is basically your safe mid option that is also confirmable. Like, she's pretty much everything I wanted for this character. It's weird that we have like three really mid range dominant characters right now. Like, I've seen more mid range characters in this game than I think in the whole Street Fighter V. So, um, it's kind of weird. But, well, it makes I just sense. Like her options. What's it? No, I, I just, uh, it makes sense because that thing I'm always fucking complaining about 16 bit, like, you play a drinking game for every time he says mid range. Uh, he talks about mid range so much that 
there's just going to be a lot of characters that are in that thing now. You would think, you would think. Like, he's Q senior QA analyst. I don't know what his shit was. He said it today, but boy. He... You can't talk about mid-range that much and not put a bunch of characters in the mid-range. And here's the difference with Jade. Um, her her uh, glow that negates projectiles, yes. it's pretty fast. I mean, if I had to estimate, it looks like it's about somewhere between 15 to 18 frames startup. Just for a point of reference, Cyrax's net was 18 frames, right? So um, that helps her a lot. That 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 glow input lets her get back in the mid-range without having to worry about this jump in, dash and bullshit against Baraka's spark or something like that. And I, I timed it. I, 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 obviously, you can't do these things perfectly, but I timed the glow lasts about 5.4 seconds. That's how long oh. I timed it for. Okay, so that, that's, that's good. enough time to do a lot. That's enough time for you to literally walk into the range you want to be in without not having to wor without worrying about projectiles for a full five seconds. Yeah, that's and, that's buff. Yeah, so I don't care about your ex spark, spark Baraka. I'm back in the mid range. I can do what I want to do. That is so interesting. That is such a fantastic design, and I feel like she's more balanced than Cabal because Cabal, we didn't really go into it much last week because there was so much to talk about, but. I feel like Cabal's kind of dumb right now. I feel like his options um, and his strings seem pretty good and pretty fast. But but that's another topic for another day. I really, really like what they've done with Jade. Um, I think Glow mixed in with her mid-range options is going to make this character a lot of fun and is going to let me do the things I want to do because, I don't know, it's one of my big problems with Injustice 2 is a lot of characters just shut down neutral. And I feel like I can never play the game I want to play, even if it's balanced, even if I technically win the matchup. I, a lot of it's just this really... I feel like there's a lot of options in Justice 2 that just make the game stop. Jade is like the inversion of that. She has an option that forces the game to continue when everyone tries to make it stop with some sort of spacing option. I like that a lot. I think that is really interesting. Uh, I agree. I, um... Obviously, I'm nowhere... Uh, near as well informed about Jade's moveset as you are, sir. Well, I but, spent uh, many an hour hours just watching the same footage over and over again today, so <laughs> it, it was a it, lot of work. It shows, but listen, that is the kind of, uh, you know, thing that people come to the Warrior Shrine for. They definitely come here for your Jade analysis and my uh, searching for hit stops in video games it's you know <laughs> well it's a good thing we're not talking about soul calver anymore then <laughs> that's probably a plus um, we're not talking about almost exclusively namco games these days so ooh, namco um boy when's negan gonna be in this game when's negan when's julia oh my gosh i'm ready to play that fucking character there's I, you know there's going to be some guest characters in this game. I keep, you know, I keep sitting around and thinking about it, and every time something really cool happens, like, you know, you see shit like footsies, you know, finally coming back after all this time, uh, interesting gameplay, fucking whatever, uh, flawless blocking, you just wonder, like, man, you know, who's the weird character that's going to be doing these weird things and it's going to look weird? It's because there's so much good. I, I I said this last week that my favorite returning character is, is is just the gameplay how this game plays this thing has me most excited there should be some weird fuckers in this game that's gonna make it look weird I did make a list of worries SpongeBob. for Jade because there are some concerns I have about the character yeah yeah, yeah. Um, maybe that I'm, I'm trying to find some footage to listen to while you're talking about her to help myself help educate myself go ahead go for, go for well, it well I, I think the first question I think we all had when we saw the trailer is what are her default moves and 16-bit answered this uh, pretty clearly for the most part, with one exception. There's something 16-bit was really vague on. I'll get to that in a minute, but we know her green kick, her ground glaive, and her parry, and her glow all seem default. It's weird that multiple characters have a default parry. I feel like if anything should be an ability, it should be a parry. Whatever, hmm. right? Now, it's here's odd, where it's odd, not... but... Go, yeah, go ahead. Well, just maybe with multiple characters having a parry, but... Uh, to me, the, the the one thing 16-bit wasn't explicit on was her staff spin. She has a special that um, basically yeah, just does. pummels you with, with a staff, mm -hmm. and that can move her into a combo in the corner, right? The night he did special. not cover that in the default lists. So our first intuition would be 
that it's not a default move. But when he finally went over that move, he said, oh, I forgot about this one. Oh, I, so, I do remember that. I, yeah. I'm not mm. sure if he meant that he meant to cover it earlier in that variation or if it's actually a default. My my understanding is that it is actually a default move in all variations. The reason I think that is because he did it in all three of her variations. He did it in Green Monster. He did it in uh, the variation It Ain't Easy. I love that name. <laughs> and uh, he did it in the variation uh, With Envy. <laughs> So I think it's a default. And honestly, if you look at the move, it looks like a default move. So I'd be really sad if I had to fucking use a slot for that move. Hopefully that's not the case, but we'll see. <sighs> that move really just took me right back to Injustice 1 when I saw it. It's, well, I think everyone wants a twirl staff. I think we're all born with that. That's some evolutionary shit. Like our great ape ancestors all twirled staffs or some shit, and now we can't help it. So, I mean, you're not wrong. I think you might be onto something. Uh, man, it was really fun fighting Doom Days, Doom Doomsdays with that move. Um, what, what the? Oh fuck, that got loud really fast. Okay, you know what I like about Jade? What's that? I like that cool cloak thing that she's wearing on her face. I do too. I like that a lot. It's very Razio. Yeah, I like the Soul Reaver fucking cloak thing she's wearing. I, I like all that shit. Good. Yeah, and I like that she's gray. You know, I just. I'm just gonna say it. I don't care. Gray's a great color, man. Everyone likes gray. She's a revenant. Am I ashamed to admit it? By the way, dude, I I know it's really early to be doing a break, but there's some noise issues going on outside my uh, my balcony. So listen, hey, would it be alright fucking... if we took like five real quick? Absolutely. Go bust some heads. Do what you got to do. All right, cool. I'll be right back. <laughs> Tell me about this staff spin of Jade's that she got from Nightwing. <laughs> well, it seems good. Um, I think the big question I have in all these combat casts are how safe are some of these moves? Now, it looked like someone did a full punish on her um, on her uh, her non-metered green kick. So if that's not safe, I can only imagine the staff spin's not safe. But if it was safe, oh, that would be so sick. Because if I have you in the corner... I can just do whatever I want, cancel the staff spin, and if it doesn't hit, whatever. If it does hit, though, I can convert that into a corner combo. So this stuff is really exciting to me. Um, and I think it's the kind of move we all wanted to see from a staff character. I know Razor's really happy about the staff spin, so um, we haven't even gotten into the abilities yet. And some of the abilities I'm not wild about, but there's like three of them I'm really excited for. So were you ready to get into the, the non-default stuff or no? Yes. No, I mean, yeah, dude, absolutely. I'm, um, I'm, uh, I can't remember it. So, yeah, this is going to be fun. What is it? Well, I'm probably going to remember it when you tell let's me. Let's talk that. about the boring ones first. Um, there's the upward glaive and the air glaive. Uh, this, this feels oh, very yes. akin to what we saw in Mournful Katana. Um, and this, this stuff is the boring stuff. I don't really care about it. The upward glaive is a, is a little cooler because, um, I don't know, it just has this really cool air path, you know, that covers a, a really interesting, uh, it's just an interesting spacing option. I've never seen an upward projectile cover that much space. It kind of is like this swirl, and you can't control it. It's preset. Um, so that's a little interesting. Hmm. Now, uh, yet another character has a fucking air projectile on, on, on their jump forward, and I I didn't like it with Cabal. I don't like it with Jade, I think. I, even though technically... Um, this this comes from Mournful, so in a weird way, it's legacy. I just think these jump in projectile moves are boring. I think this, maybe two characters at most should have a move like this, and we got I think like this one. three right now. I know for sure we have um, for sure Cabal and Jade have it. I think Scarlet might have it, but I can't remember. Um, but we saw some cool. She already has some cool aerial stuff. Which is why I feel like this move is unnecessary. Uh, we saw, I think, 16-bit do a cross-up jump kick and convert it into a combo. That was really cool to me. I can't wait to do stuff like that when I get the game. But if she's able to convert off jump kicks, she's already going to be very difficult to anti-air. Um, that was always my big thing about Katana. I hated fighting MK9 Katana because you, there was always the threat of jump kick. She got so much damage off of a raw jump kick and fan. God, there was a so, lot of reasons to 
hate fighting MK9 Katana. So I just don't like this stuff for the meta. I don't think it's bad, but I think it belongs to like one character. I think one character should have options like this. I don't I don't I don't think we need many more than that, but we'll see though. Um those and finally there's the ground wave. She does like this green wave, like hockey puck kind of motion that shoots like a Geese Howard's projectile at you and it covers. I it's did not low. see that one. It, it, it's it again. This would be cool for another character. I don't think Jade needed this, um, but it, it's not bad. Like I don't think this. This is like the the uh, the jump in glaive where it actually kind of dumbs down the meta. I just I don't like fucking guessing games. At least not in excess. I realize fighting games are built on guessing games, but I just feel like this is a dumb guessing game. So I don't I don't want to see more stuff like this. Although I have a feeling that we're gonna this is gonna be part of a pattern. Um, the ground wave is cool. I just like I said, I just I, I find low projectiles to be boring in general. Um, now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're getting to the stuff that I think is really cool. Uh, Jade has a command well, run. It's just tough. What's up? Uh, do Do you know if um, probably not? I doubt they talked about it. Um, if any of these moves like replace other moves, are are they replacement moves in the variation? They did or not talk they... about it. I wish they did because I'd really like to know how many slots uh, some of these abilities take up. Because yeah, that's a big deal. And you know, like Sub Zero, like you know, he can do the cold shoulder, but it takes away the slide. So, uh, depending on which moves you pick, like you, it really changes the you know the the overall tool set that she has. And I that's one reason it's like I wish they would point that out. I don't think the run takes the place of anything. If it did, um, I'm thinking maybe it might take the place of glow, but I can't remember. I can't remember if they did glow in that variation because you need glow with Jade. I feel like that's such a big part of her game. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to believe that it was... Oh, wanna... shit! Yeah? Sorry, I, I finally fucking found the air glaive you're talking about. It, it does Robin's thing. Well, that's the it first the, one, not the second the one. Stupid smart batarang thing. It does a little loop and comes down and hits that shit. Man, everyone's stealing from Robin in this video game. <laughs> that one I'm okay with. It's the other one I don't like. It's the one they show after that. Yeah, I, th I think I see the one you're talking about. Yeah, that I just, I think, I hate fun. that. Like, oh, I'm jumping in. Am I going to throw a projectile or am I coming in with a jumping yeah. punch? You don't know. That's mm -hmm. dumb. I, I hate those little, I, those forced guessing games. I don't think anyone, I don't think any of those things made the game more interesting unless the character's built around that. A good oh, example dude. is, uh, yeah? I'm, I, I, I am so sorry. I'm getting triggered here. I didn't see this, this, this section here when we watched it. The ground wave thing you were just talking about. Yeah. It's another Nightwing move. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. She's got the staff spin and the Nightwing fucking thing that goes across the floor. God, hers is a lot dude. better though. I think. I think it's much better than Nightwing's. Y yes, it does look a lot better. You're right. It's it just uh, no, not like better isn't good. Like just stronger. I think it's going to be dumber than Nightwing. It, oof. yeah, the staff spin. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So um, yeah, the command run. I'm really excited for that one. And Cyborg actually called it. Cyborg said. That Jade should have something like this as a callback to her UMK3 AI brokenness. I think mean, that's a good point. I I did not hear that episode of Random Select, so that was news to me. But a uh, good call on Cyborg's behalf. I think that's the move most people are very excited for. But I don't think it's the most popular. We'll get to that one last. Uh, the next one is one I plan on using, which is the double grain kick. Um, this is a classic move. She could do this in MK9. Um, you know, it's funny for how bad Jade was in MK9. It wasn't for lack of interesting tools. Because the green kick was neutral on block. That was safe in MK9. It was a high, but it was a great neutral tool. Um, what made Jade bad is just she she was overwhelmed with startups. She had trouble opening up other characters. That's kind of what made her so shitty. And when she did open people up, her damage was kind of whatever. There was this whole legion of people who said, hey guys, Jade has damage. And this whole Jade doesn't have damage. It's a myth. I tried getting Jade's quote damage. I could I could not break thirty percent without like a full on jump in combo. It was a pain in the ass. Um, like compared to Sindel, who gets meterless forty one percent. Yeah, that Jade had some problems, of course, but she had some cool, to cool tools. Like a lot of her tools were good. It just her shitty strengths and her shitty frame data. That's really what made her so bad. So the double green kick is cool. This is I'm using this mostly for corner carry, uh, considering that. It sounds like her best combo options are going to come from the corner. 
So this feels like something I'm going to want to have once I'm playing the game come April. So that's cool, but this is the one I was excited for, and that's the range buff. Apparently, she can uh, uh, add an ability to her variation set that gives her stacked abilities to some of her chain combos, and also buffs some of her low normals and whatnot. So she basically has a sweep that hits jump distance. It's a jump distance low, which I presume that's is safe crazy. as long as you don't jump on a reaction. I don't know. I can't remember how fast the startup is, but um, all her chains crazy. seem to get better. This is really interesting, but... I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to use it because it's going to take up three slots. It looks like it's going to be expensive. So we'll see, but that's the coolest part about the character right now. I would hate if I have to choose between the command run and uh, the, the range buff. I really hope I don't have to make that decision come April because I feel like I really want both those elements to my character. <laughs> this... No, I, no, granted... I don't know how good the cancel is going to be. The run cancel takes out one bar defensive meter. It looks fairly reactable to me. I don't know if she's going to be able to get things started with that, but God, just, just as a as a footsie tool, though, to be able to you know bridge the gap that quickly and you have glow, that's amazing. Like that would be really powerful. Come come when the game comes out. That kick looks so weird. <laughs> the double the double kick like that's classic. You know, I I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, it, it it's definitely that. It just it looks funny. It's okay though. Listen, listen, this game has like less funny looking stuff, and I've been looking for an NRS game than I've seen in uh, you know a long time from NRS. They cleaned up a lot of their animation issues, not all of them, but a lot of them. So it makes it you gotta look harder. And that one's a, uh, but that one's an, an intentional thing. Like I get it. Like that one's intentionally looks. The double kick looks a little a, a little funky, but it's fine. It's fine. Have you seen any weird animations? Like you know, any like I don't really have a good eye for that. The only animation that Katana I... like that crouching that crouching kick she had in MKX that weird shit like in her ass animations. Nothing weird. that bad. The only thing that pisses me off is uh, I don't think Cabal's uh, Nomad cancel looks nearly as good in this game. It just looks like a generic no. block when he goes into the cancel. It doesn't look like yeah, anything. Yeah, you're right. Which takes away a lot of the appeal of Cabal, because it kind of looked like he was doing, like, some Flash shit when he was on Rushdown, so... <laughs> that's the only thing I'm kind of butthurt about, but everything else seems good, but I don't really have an eye for that kind of stuff anyway. She... God, yeah, some... That, 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 that stuff that you were talking about, the, the range buff shit, man... It looks she's really strong. I just <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna give me some bad days. I can tell. I know, the good thing is people are recording frame data already. Um, uh oh. So I'm excited to see what the recovery is on a lot of that shit. If they if they can even do that, I know they can do it for startup. I don't know if they can do it for active frames or if they can do it for um. I don't know if they can do it for recovery. I don't think that's possible unless you actually. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, it's still very new, but um. I don't know, so that covers pretty much most of what I have to say about Jade overall. I do have some other notes on, on uh, things I'm a little worried about. Overall, I think she looks really good, but... Well, I mean, share the sh sh share the concerns. What, what what are you concerned about? What's, what, what's the problems? Well, it doesn't seem like she has a lot of combo extensions. I think what they, they kind of built this character... They kept saying she's not a combo character. In my mind, I'm thinking... It's it's fucking Mortal Kombat. Every character should be a comp, should be a combo character. Um, I can see why they would not want her to be a combo character, given her options. But you can give her combos without giving her damage. I just feel like you make the character less interesting um, when you take away their combo uh, potential. That's not to say she's not gonna have some sick conversions. If she does, you know that that's a game changer. But right now, I feel like combo construction as a whole is kind of weird in this game. I'm really excited to play the game April just to see if I'm wrong about this. Yeah, combo combos in this game are have a um, a tough a tough relationship, and it's hard to really get a good read on it because of you know you they talk about it. It's a talking point of them, like kind of wanting to scale back like the big combos and that kind of that's not exactly what the vision is for this game. It seems that's what they say, but clearly like some characters we've seen they're doing you know combos uh like fairly typical looking and length combos for a mortal Kombat game so there's a little bit of uh 
Yeah, it's just it, it's 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 one of those things that I think is gonna remain weird and you know un 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 uh, figured out because I'm really good with words right now, obviously. Um, until we get to play the fucking game, it's it is weird though. I I am confused myself about how about the exact relationship this game has with combos. I would like to know. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to be no combo breakers. wrong about some of this stuff, but I feel like many characters are lacking interesting combo extensions. So, Randy Cool brings up a point that they haven't really showed all of her. Uh, I KB. I I thought I meant fatal blows, but I don't. I, no crushing blows. Crushing blows. Crushing blows. Yeah. Hey. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, and obviously everyone has an extension off the uppercut uh, with a crushing blow, and her uppercut's also swole as hell. It it hits a uh, it hits sweep distance. That. So that, that's really good. Oh my. God. God, because boy, if you didn't, if your fucking uppercut wasn't bad enough with cryo sub, it's gonna be fun. And this looks better too. This looks much better. It looks faster at least. It does look, oh, it maybe not. Much. I think cryo was 14 frames. It's been a while, but um, uh, the other concern I have is something that no one has talked about yet, at least not that I've seen. And it's that I'm worried a lot of these cool strings, these cool like uh, these staff chain combos are gonna have some game, not game breaking, but character breaking gaps. Because once people get good at flawless block blocking, which my theory is not going to be as hard as people think, I think people go into the lab and they just find out where the gaps are. People, in, in a day, people are going to be flawless blocking all this shit. So I really want to know what the gap data is for Jade because I feel like that is going to really make or break the character on a higher level of play. And it looks like there's thing, gaps. Dude. I feel like a lot of these strings have gaps. It, it It's so fucking weird. I'm uh, the 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 flawless block into all this stuff. It feeds back into the thing that again. That's why it, I feel like that. I, I feel like that's why it is a talking point that combos don't have the the significance that they've had in the past. Like you don't get your damage that way as much, or they, or they don't want you getting your damage with combos as much. They want you to get your damage from uh, crushing blows and all that shit and. Um, you know, just pokes, like hits and fucking shit like that, like, you know, strikes and that might be, you know, sort of why the flawless block thing is is there, so, you know, you are getting damage, and damage is being dealt with hits here and there and stuff like that, because, I mean, damage is, seems pretty buff in this game overall, I think. Um, well, like, blows, I, yes, I, it does. I like it. I, like, to me, this game, it feels dangerous like you know moves feel dangerous and taking damage seems dangerous and you I feel like you don't need to get all those comp like you know big long combos to get that damage it seems this is all fucking conjecture from just me sitting here watching the shit um I, I want the big long combos for one reason and that's so if I have to spend a bar uh, to get the combo extension I can extend the length of my combo and get a lot of that back that's one of the reasons why I would like more extensive combos I don't even care about the damage I just, combos are a big part of the fun of fighting games for me. So I want to be rewarded for my hard work. I want, or at least for my knowledge, combos aren't traditionally that hard in Mortal Kombat, but I'd like to see how far I can take it. I want to see how much damage I can get. It's not, for me, it's not really about getting big damage. The only strategic thing I'm worried about is can I buy myself enough time to get some of that delicious meter back? That's one of my strategic points, but I just enjoy, I enjoy a higher execution stuff. I hope the opportunity is there. And I mean, you know, again, like, you know, uh, combo breakers are not in the game, which, again, you know, feeds back into that thing of, like, they are trying... They, they're, they're, there is a discouragement coming from them of doing that sort of thing, of playing that way and leaning on combos that much. Uh, and the mechanics are trying to help that. But, you know, how successful that turns out to be and how successful they are at that... Will be will be ultimately up to us. Whenever we play the game, whenever players play the game, people fucking figure it out, and it's not going to be what they fucking want. We're gonna, you know, people are gonna find this game's dash blocking or whatever. We play it however we want to fucking play it. That's true. Yeah. Um, Which is why I wish people would shut. Up. I wish people would stop crying about the dash and just play the fucking game. It's way too early for that. I love Maximilian, but he's one of the offenders on that. He wants them to buff the dash so much and. And he, you know what, he might even be right, but I'm like, let's give it a chance. 
let's see how sort of sort of like the offensive walk meta works out. Let's see how it plays first, you know? I feel like it's way too early to be even talking about stuff like that. Let's give it a chance, man. I'm watching this right now, watching Baraka here. Baraka's walk speed is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, Everyone's got pretty I, decent walk speed. With maybe Giris being the exception, I don't remember, though. Giris, man, that guy. That's a character. Uh, but no, I, uh, yeah... A lot of it is, I feel like people are just like, you know, MKX, this is not that. And MKX was the opposite of this. MKX was like mobility fucking city, and you could go and run and do whatever the fuck you want. It was crazy, zany sh shit. Um, and I think there's a big, like, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of growing pains going into this game from that kind of mindset for a lot of people. And maybe not everybody even gets there. I don't know. It, you know, it took me a long time to get used to MKX with running and shit. I don't think I ever used it well. Um, so personally, I'm happy about the refined um, approach to mobility. But well, it, 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 it does seem it's definitely premature to be like, it's a problem. Because, you know... Yeah, I mean, oh, I, game's not out. and I've gone on record saying my problem with MKX was not the craziness. I actually like the craziness in MKX. My problem with MKX was just the flaccid defensive options and the the shallow mix-ups. How just, it, it's such a coin flip. It's a lottery ticket mentality where I'm just going to do this and see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, whatever. If it doesn't work right. out, I get 40%. That's what I don't like about MKX. It's the opposite of the crazy stuff. It's the boring stuff in MKX I don't like. The fucking run-in shenanigans, like that stuff's fun. I mean, if anything, I want well, to make I do it feel like that's yeah. I do feel like that stuff uh, enabled the dumb mix-ups and you know the that's the true. Shitty, I mean, whatever. There, there's a relationship you know. there. I feel like it. The, the dumb mix-ups and just the boring guessing games were accented by how easy it was to get in. But if you fucking take away the cancel windows on a lot of the overheads, and you get rid of stamina, you get to keep the craziness, but offense becomes more interesting. Add some better stagger options, you just get a better game. Um, I want to make it crazier. I want to get rid of all the stamina restrictions, but... but um, Well, the stamina wasn't doing anything anyway. Stamina was fucking stupid. We've talked about that like every episode yeah. since then. <laughs> the, the stamina fucking meter in that game was the stupidest thing it's ever been in any video game ever, and that is not an exact exaggeration. I don't know how to hyperbole. It's real. I would like to address something Armand brought up in the chat right now. Do you think Fallout's block should be one or two frames if they're going to be easy to do? Um, I I would kind of want to do a halfway point there. What I would do is I'd make it... I think three frames is a little too big of a window. I think it's a little too easy. I think you should get uh, two frames. Um, let me put it this way. Let's, let's keep it three frames. Three frames, you get the benefits of no chip, right? Although they've been kind of vague on that. They have, some 16-bit said it's reduced chip. Other people have said no chip, so I don't really know what to believe on there. Um, but let's say you get the no chip benefit with three frames. But if you hit it within a two frame window, then you get advantage. I think I like that better. And if you get one frame, then you, you get like, I don't know, the, the character breaks his wrist on your chest or some shit like that. He cracks a finger on your forehead when he tries to punch you. Something cool like that. I think we should reward better timing. Um, but if you make it, if you make all flawless block one frame, all you're going to do is just quarantine the the non-amazing players. The one frames are hard, dude. I think they're not as hard as yeah. people make them out to be on offense, but defensive one frames is a whole different ball game. Um yeah, I think that's gonna alienate a lot of people. So I think two frames for the advantage is fair. I think people can lap. Three frames I think is gonna be too easy. I agree. I think uh you're you're absolutely right about those windows. Um three frame it does feel a little too big. Just, you know, from... Obviously, like, it, it's not anecdotal data. That's not the right word here. Uh, it's also a little bit conjecture because there's there might be factors that are specific to this game that might change that a little bit. But generally speaking, uh, you know... <sighs> I mean, if you've played Street Fighter V or KI, yeah. three frames is like an eternity. I promise. I promise you, listeners, it's it is. not as, as it's not as hard as it sounds. But I'm sorry. Go on. No, no, you, you're you're right. I um, 
doing some other labbing in the thing, in the iBallistic thing, in the iBallistic lab. We've uh, played with some stuff with some frames and shit, and I was like, three frames? That's tiny. And then you started doing it. It's like, this is happening way too often. I'm getting this too often, so you, this is crazy. And no, that that is actually the way it turned out for me, but I... And I, but I'm not good. I'm. We all know that I'm not good. I'm fucking shitty as hell. You played my NJP MKX strategies. I honestly thought. Fantastic. I mean, real talk. Like your Takeda was strong. I'd like to play your Takeda again one day just to see where I stand. The Takeda was awful, and don't you dare try to make it sound like a not a downplay. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. I think you do Three. about it. You're right. You're right about everything, and you're right about the window. Three frames is not is is not much. Because it, it's so interesting to think with like parries, because parries are so sick. This whole deal, low tier Takeda, Frumble Foot is absolutely right. Uh, the thing with parries, like they are hype, like this classic third strike parries. It's super hype and whatnot. But if you set it like wrong and you know, you're a little off on the, the, the windows there, and it's just a parry fest. Like, you see parries all the time. Boom, 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 boom. It's not hype anymore. It goes away. It's not it's not interesting. It's not hype. And it's not fun. Um, you know, in order for something to have that kind of really sick hype thing, it has to be kind of rare. Um, and, 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 yeah, my, yeah, I, I think, I think three is a little a little too big. I didn't know that there were um, the bit the benefit you get changes depending on which frame. Like what it doesn't. Is, is no, that I made thing? that up. That's that's what oh. I want. That's not actually in the game. No, I mean because I mean, that that, that, that sounded no. what's up. That sounded no. Yeah, that sounded interesting. That would be that that, that would be cool. I mean that um, is true in third strike with a red parry, but yeah, not in MK yet. I, and and obviously like. I said, I say this all the time about MK11. I don't fucking know because I haven't played it. Um, if the game's not even out yet, so even if you do play it, shit's gonna, you know, change a bit, so whatever. I'm sitting here from, like, my armchair fucking uh, research data, and I punch my keyboard, um, you know, saying, oh, that's too much, and oh, this should be over here. Three frames, whatever, but... Mm, well, it's just a response to Randy. Randy, I, I, I think you're right. I 60% agree with Randy. Three frames is harder than it sounds, I think, for for single normal or or for starting chains and stuff like that. For gaps, I don't think it's going to be hard at all. I think, I think it's going to be easy as hell for gaps. It's going to take time. Like You will have to practice it and grind it out. I don't think that's going to be hard for gaps. But if you're trying to like evade like a jump in or if you're trying to evade a projectile, with flawless block, yes, I think Randy's absolutely right. That is going to be very difficult, and that is not going to happen over. This stuff really just makes me want to be playing the game right now. I, wanna, I thought, yeah, you know, right, man. I want to fucking play this game, out. dude. The game looks so good. I, it does. It looks really fucking good. It's got some interesting shit. I want to know if it's you know. It's so interesting that that, that I'm almost like ah, you know, it's like Schrodinger's fucking uh, dead cat. Like, hopefully all the stuff that sounds really good and seems really good, they don't fuck it up somehow and there's some bullshit hidden in there, like some weird stamina meter, 50-50 shit, like, you know, whatever. Like, where's the bullshit we don't see yet? I hope that's not in there. But I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not gonna be a bitch. I'm not a total bitch. Um, yeah, um... But I just wanna know, like, you know, I wanna get in there, I wanna figure, figure it out for myself. I wanna see it, I wanna feel it, taste it, and touch it. The good news so, is, we've covered a lot of ground. I think, officially, there is more time between the December 5th reveal to today there is between today and the April release date I think if my math is right and that that's its own miracle man we've we've come Tim? so far dude Tim did I do it again you gotta you gotta did stop I play with your story. heart you're gonna, you're, game? You're, you're gonna ruin everything you just fucking don't don't tell us how close we are <laughs> <laughs> at 11 <laughs> it's gonna grab they're not gonna cancel Christmas, Christmas. Oh, man, they're they could delay that Christmas. Fucking... <laughs> so, yeah. They're yeah. gonna they're gonna delay it. It's just gonna be fucking early 2017 all over again. It's gonna be <sighs> we're gonna be stuck in a blockstone loop. So the gaps was my other worry for Jade. I think that could affect her in a way it hasn't affected any of the characters. Other characters we've seen so far, 
at least on the same level. Or I could be wrong. It's possible all that cool staff shit. No caps. <laughs> we don't know any frame data yet. So it's, but I, I, it doesn't look like they designed the character that way. So we'll see. Um, I wish I remembered. Um, in the pro player exhibition they did uh, at the reveal event, uh, Sonic Fox got a parry in a uh, flawless block. Um, I thought that he got that in on a on a gap on a string. He gap. did interrupt a gap, but it wasn't with the flawless block. It's just the gap was just that big and he did a string. But he, there were flawless blocks happening. I just don't know the context. Oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. I, I want to. That's another thing. Like I'm listen, listen. I'm not gonna like. I'm not trying to. Sh- talk shit about any of these guys like you know fuck, and especially not 16 bit or whatnot but it would be really fun to see more of this shit happening like on the combat cast see someone pull off of the flawless block or whatever you know um, yeah, Injustice had this stuff too not the flawless block but Injustice you could if you knew the gaps there were some gaps that were full combo punish like Beatles 1-1-1 there was a gap in that string you could full combo punish with your fastest normal so yeah that was crazy that's the stuff I want to see gone I gotta touch it. They really should have put this beta out earlier. Like, I've always thought that since they announced it, and I just think it even more like with every new thing they show about the game, it's like, man, why is that beta so late? It it just seems really bizarre to me. I'm not gonna stop complaining about it. I'm gonna keep complaining about it all the way there. I'm curious who, what characters we're all using for the beta. That's, I think, the big question on my mind right now. Because um, I don't know who's gonna be revealed um, by then, but... I will. Uh, Gabby, yeah. I will. Well, do you like? Do you? You don't expect all these characters to be in the beta, or do you? I expect a lot. I don't know if the ones we're seeing are in the beta. I expect at least eight characters, though. Mm. I mean, DOA had six, I think, five or six, and Soul Calibur had fifteen. Whoa! And those betas, I don't even think required a pre-order. You can just download the shit on PSN. So, yeah. You're right. I did download it. I didn't pre-order. Um. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. How many Injustice had? Um, I thought Injustice 2 had... Did it have like any like rotating spots or something like that? No, no I don't believe so. I know Street okay, Fighter I, did, and Injustice did not. Okay. Uh, it's, it's been a while. I forgot... Um, you know, I forgot everything that was at the rate... The, the win quit from that beta. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, listen, Sub-Zero's going to be in this thing, so of course I'm going to play him. But... Okay, tell me, what do you like? What is it about what you see for Jade? Yeah, that is doing it for you over what we saw of Scarlet. For one reason, one thing I like about Jade as opposed to Scarlet is I don't feel like a lot of Scarlet's zoning options are default. You can't get rid of those, and those are tools I'm just not terribly interested in using. Um. I think another big difference is I don't feel like you have to commit as hard with Jade's mid-range. I feel like Scarlet, you kind of have to commit once you start going into strings because they're forward-projecting. Cabal's the same way, but I think Cabal has better mix-ups than Scarlet does, at least potentially with abilities. So, um, yeah, that's a big difference. I just feel like I don't feel like she has the same... She has a lot of mid-range tools, but she doesn't have the same mid-range potency, and even though she probably has a lot of the same confirm opportunities as Jade, I think Jade can confirm into more interesting stuff. Now, granted, I have to completely review Scarlet. I haven't looked at Scarlet's tools in a day now, so I well, maybe I'll change my mind, but I definitely feel like Jade's a better fit thus far from what I've seen. I mean, some of Jade's range tools, she doesn't have to commit at all like that sweep, as long as you make sure they're not jumping in. I don't, I don't see any risk in using that sleep, that sleep but I don't know. I, like I said, I have to look at it again. I don't know how reactable it is either, so we'll see. Does that answer your question at all or nah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a... Uh... Can't believe I just said just... nay. So much <laughs> shit that I want to fucking know about this game. And by no, I mean uh, fucking play it. I want to... I wanna... I want to fucking dick around with, like, Baraka, dude. I saw the, like, you know, they went over Baraka on this thing, too, and he, he has some hype shit, too. It's uh funny to me how, interesting to me, like, how interesting they, they, they made his shit look. And by interesting, I mean, like, mashing out those amplified Chop Chops. That looks uh, funny. I think we're all having a good time it, doing that. It does. Like, it, like it, it, it's a, that was a really good idea, and it's 
<sighs> it's also it seems dumb but it's not dumb you know what I mean it fits the character super well and, and it's interesting and today they shut off all this flag shit and you know I like the flags too um hey Evan saying hi what's up Evan I can't say your real name we, how you doing good sir <laughs> you can't say his fake name his real name we have no problem with this is a uh... I can't say his fake oh, yes. name. It's too hard. My mouth doesn't uh, make that shape. Um, I think we're good. I mean, yeah, does that do it for, for Jade? I mean... Do you have... Okay, wait. Uh, what are your... How did you feel about her skin selections that they showed off? I thought... I, I think the, the primary looks really good. I think the primary looks amazing. I think the other two look so generic. I, I don't want to go anywhere near that. I pray they give me an MK9... Uh, gear setup because I really god I don't know why I hate this whole pants revolution the the classic female ninjas look so cool I'm not anti-pants I'm glad pants is an option but give me a classic looking MK9 costume please um, and that's what's so frustrating it's like they don't want to show us any gear it's like they show us some of the J gameplay and they go over the abilities great and then it's like 20 minutes of Baraka. What? Just show me the gear. What's the big secret, right? Let me know what my character's going to look like. Especially if they're doing random gear for tournaments. Like, that's... I don't know why I can't see the gear selection yet. So... And that, You're right. We can't give them feedback if we don't know what it looks like, right? So... We'll... Yeah. No, listen. I, 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 I agree. I think Jade easily has the... Like, easily has the weakest uh, aesthetic options that we've seen so far um, of the two know. backups yes I think those two uh, the, the other two variations are really yeah big. yeah that's yes. what I'm talking about um, aesthetically yeah I'm just I, I don't know what they were thinking with those things it I, I, I said it earlier when this thing was on I think but like she kind of just looks like a generic outworld NPC like in the background somewhere like it really just what is what does that do to feed back into Jade? Like, you know, what about that is supposed to be Jade, scream Jade? Like, if they put that weird-looking shit on, you know, Scorpion or Sub-Zero or some shit, like, random-ass, bland, flat, brown, or whatever color that is, it's to be, it's just, you know, people would be like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, um, that, that hood looks like it could be on any Soul Calibur custom character. I, I I just don't know what the what the what, what the thinking was there and what I'm sure you can change the colors hopefully you know with shaders or whatever like different skins and shit but that it, like the saving grace of that thing should not be what 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 the hue is like it's such a weird choice I don't know As for, maybe I'm yeah maybe well I mean maybe I'm being a little over harsh on those things but you know pers dude they just look. She looks like an NPC in those two, but I like her first one a lot. The the first one they showed, the default. I like that one a lot. That was doing it for me. The default looks amazing. I mean, it, it makes for a fantastic phone wallpaper. I'm so happy with this wallpaper. Um, <laughs> to respond to Frumblefoot, he said, we all know why. It's because it's 2019. I think that my, I think that's what's going on in their heads. Oh, the pants. Yeah, that, that's why, that's why that's we why have a, a, a pants epidemic, right? Maybe that's what's going through their heads, but... Talking to people who want to make, you know, MK a little more conservative, I don't feel like thighs were the problem. I feel like the things they were upset about were just the um, unreasonable proportions on females. Okay, that's fair. And um, just the excess of skin, but I don't feel like thighs were their target. And the thighs are, they look cool because it goes back to like the 90s X-Men, like Psylocke. That costume looks so cool to me. It, it shows a bit of skin, but that's kind of why it looks cool. Thick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, if that's the reason, then that's disappointing. It's because I, I, I do, I, I want to make models that don't make female players uncomfortable. I am all for that. Like, I don't want any more Armika costumes. Absolutely fair. But I don't, I feel like this is another extreme. I don't want to get rid of the Psylocke aesthetic. I think it looks cool. And if it, it's, uh, if it makes people no, uncomfortable, ahead. I'd like them to talk to me and tell me why. It's like, okay, well, well what, what what line did this cross here? Because it's basically a fucking swimsuit, right? If swimsuit's making you uncomfortable, then let's talk about it. Let's, okay, it's like, well, what's the difference between this let's and this? 
Like, if someone has, like, triple Ds, if, okay, if you have a fighting game with all the female characters have triple D tits, that makes sense. I can absolutely see why that makes you uncomfortable. But, like, exposed thighs, I don't... That, that To me, that seems unreasonable. If exposed thighs make you uncomfortable, we let's at least talk about it. But, I don't know... Hey, we may be talking about this for nothing. We may buy the game, and she has all her classic costumes, right? We'll see, though. I just... I feel like if that is the case, that seems unreasonable to me. The, you know, the fucking the fucking pants uh, controversy is uh, puts me in a weird position. Um, because I I like I like the pants I like the pants on uh, MKX I do too. Tana Molina and okay, not Molina. Like that's, that's crazy Andre talk. Here. Yeah, no, nope. listen, I liked it. I liked it. The pants look so stupid on Molina, but go on. Uh. Katana, like, like she was wearing pants, but though that that oh, she has the abuki slit. So I mean, but Katana yeah, that was fine. a whole different. That was cool. I have no problem I, with Katana's outfit. Um, I uh, I I do. From what I've seen, I definitely prefer the the pants look, but it's definitely not because thighs may be uncomfortable or anything. You know about a uh, fucking you know. Skin makes me uncomfortable. That sort of thing. It definitely is for a lot of people, and it's it. It's I don't know. Like, but I've talked about this a billion times. I guess I don't really find any of these things sexy. And by these things, I mean these video game characters. Like, they're all fucking video game characters. They're running around like it's not a sexual thing or whatever. I do. See, that's exactly what I agree. It's not a sexual thing. It looks cool. Like, like sex is cheap these days. Like any Google search will give you that. But, like, I want the character to look interesting. And everyone wearing, like, fucking generic-ass, like, leather-stripped pants is just boring to me. Especially, like, in um, MKX Melina's case, where it's just fucking, like, like pseudo-metal gray just uh, looks so boring. So, yeah. I, uh... No, I... I uh, and here's another problem I have with it. The whole point of gear is for visual diversity. So if I have if I get to pick between seventeen different types of pants, I feel like that's counter to the whole gear system, which is again why I'm not a fan of gears. So you're, you're, it's the illusion of options. You're not actually getting options. You're just getting different studs. You're getting different contours in your boots and shit. I absolutely agree with that. There is no reason why um, uh, those like you know the 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 classic design options. Uh, there's no, there's no excuse for them not being present, um, you know, in games like this, like you know, with with gears, with that, with that, with that whole setup and shit. No, those should all absolutely be in there, uh, and you know, fucking do all of them. Fucking, you have the money, Warner Brothers. Do MK two, MK three, whatever you want. Do as many of them as you can. Do all those classic ones. Um, it's the exact opposite problem with Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur. I'm trying to make fucking keep their like trying to make characters keep their fucking clothing on. I don't know how to stop that. <laughs> I'm trying to make the characters be more clothed, and the game it's won't so let me. Weird. I can't play Mitsurugi with pants if I'm playing against a character with a staff. That sucks. I hate that. Um, I wish I could keep all of Samina's clothes on. With I like to start them. I'd like to end the match with the clothes I started with. I can't do that in Soul Calibur. It's bullshit. No. This is the opposite problem. Can't. Give me classic costumes, and if people don't like. That, that's the thing. I don't think anyone has a problem with fucking thighs. I think they're they're catering to something that's not even real. I think people are okay with fucking exposed thighs, but whatever. Anyway, it does honestly. I think it's you're. On the I think you're on, right now. I think you're right. Um, my only like my only rule or whatever thing as far as uh, costumes go, designs go, is um, I like it to be functional, like to make sense for the character. Um, and you know that can change depending on which version of the character you're talking about. Well, let's talk about that. All that shit. Thick ass leather Molina pants are not functional in combat, well, especially that's what I was when you're doing backflips nonstop. That's when the fucking classic costumes make sense. But yeah, I feel like Molina, whenever she you know was a emperor's daughter type thing, like you know it totally made sense for her to run around in whatever she wanted to wear, like you know whatever. But like a you know uh anarchist wartime Melina who was trying to take back the throne and shit like that like that's a little bit that does ask a for a different attire in my opinion um 
because she's doing yeah i mean she's she's fucking it's a different lifestyle she has day to day like whatever um so that's kind of my logic for why i liked the pants in, in my own head canvas is what i'm thinking um that's what i was thinking for mkx at the time too and that though like i said that it's just the kind of thing that i like for things to be and to think about but that shouldn't be the only thing that's there because there's that's why you have variety to have variety so you do the other stuff too um it shouldn't be all one way or all the other or anything that's weird and that's when stuff starts existing because of reasons outside of the video game because of uh influences and uh you know goals coming from places that aren't from the video game designers that are coming from upstairs wanting to uh accomplish certain things yeah and honestly i wasn't oh, even gonna bring it up but it is it's it's an interesting topic at least i do want my characters to look cool at the very least i do want classic options i think it'd be kind of a shame if we don't get that because of the the current gear aesthetic but i i feel like it's time for questions i think it's time to yeah. Yeah. get those wheels turning right. let's uh let's hop over there listen you have to talk about this stuff when you're talking about jade uh, for better or for worse good or bad this is this is the stuff that comes up i don't know why but it does well probably because of all the reasons you said she uh they, they all fucking used to dress like psylocke and that was cool Gosh, you are not joking. We do have a lot of questions. Oh my gosh. L listen, listen. Don't get scared. We're just going to give it our fucking, you know. I think we're at January broken. 27th, I think is where we're at. Oh, good. What happened? How did we get that far behind? A lot's happened, dude. We have two. We had two reveals since then. I want to blame down for. Are these things still going? Okay, that's true. Okay. We didn't even get to questions last uh, last word. No, right? we didn't. So we got work to do, man. Let's. Uh, okay, wait. Are, did you find the the question? What's yeah, the first, one? the first one I think is from Aramond. Um, uh, January. It's the the final question before January twenty eighth. Um, okay. Oh, it's for me too. Non fighting <laughs> question. For temp. Listen, hang on. Listen, I saw this fucking early. Yeah, Armand definitely. You've got a fan temp. You've got a big. Well, fan the guy temp. brings up an exceptional point. The whole South is known for barbecue, but especially Texas. Is it really that great? If it is, where are the places to go? Okay, here's the thing. We do barbecue well, but I don't think that's what makes Texas barbecue special. Um, barbecue is not fucking hard to master. Okay, as long as you have the equipment, you know, you're in there. But what makes Texas special is the availability of barbecue. And some of the best barbecue I've ever had is at, like, gas stations off of I-35. Um, so I think my favorite brisket sandwich, like, of all time is on a, a gas station no one's ever heard of. Um, but we, I think it's pretty good. I feel like we excel at brisket. I feel like other parts of the South are better. Other things, like, I feel like maybe, like, the whole Mississippi region, I feel like they're really good at ribs. Um... I, but you're not going to go wrong with Texas barbecue as long as you're local. If you go to a Texas barbecue chain, all this shit goes out the window, okay? If you go to a Bill Miller's, expect mediocre, like, 4.5 out of 10 barbecue, okay? Just be ready for that. Make sure wherever you go is local, and it'll, it'll probably be amazing. Personally, I think when it comes to Texas cuisine, every city is a little better at something else. I feel like Corpus Christi is the, is the best at Mexican food. I honestly believe that at the bottom of my heart. Uh, Houston is better for uh, for barbecue and just a more ethnically diverse stuff. If you want good Vietnamese food or a good ramen shop, Houston is the way to go. Now, San Antonio is good at breakfast, believe it or not. We make a hell of a breakfast taco. Um, but other than that, we're pretty diverse. Uh, Dallas? I haven't been to Dallas much. I've only driven through Dallas, Dallas once in my life. and I had a pretty sick-ass burger while I was there, but I haven't tried their barbecue yet, so I imagine they're pretty strong on the barbecue side as well. But, um, I think there's a more important question here, and that's uh, Django. I would like to ask something about Arkansas, but I don't know what it's known for. So this is your chance to redeem the great state of Arkansas. What, what kind of what is the Arkansas cuisine, Django? 
Um, probably gonna have to go with crystal meth. Uh, <laughs> if you are in the market, you come to the right place. Uh, that and diamonds, I guess. Sounds I expensive. Always gotta, I always gotta throw diamonds out there because we're the only place you can get them in the continental U.S. Come get these blood diamonds, motherfucker. Oh, apparently we skipped some questions. We didn't go far back enough. There's some. Uh... Oh god, there's fucking uh, a prequel to this shit. Listen. Okay. Um, uh... a, but, 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 well, I, I I would like to point out, like he says, especially Texas is known for barbecue. Um, man, I feel like the South in general, like, there's a lot of places that are very well known for barbecue, and I think of all of them, uh, I think Tennessee might have uh, more barbecue uh, hype about it than Texas, not to take anything from Texas. Texas well, Texas is like the cowboy state, and people associate, like, big hats and shit with us, and they associate, like, like deer heads on walls. That's kind of what people picture when they think of Texas, so... I think people's minds automatically go to beef and barbecue and shit like that with Texas, so... Well, there's definitely fucking beef. There, I mean, dude, it's just... Yeah. But barbecue is, a, is an interesting thing, and you're absolutely right about how it works. Um, like, getting barbecue from uh, a no-name place is almost always, like, you know, where you're going to hear people say is the best one like oh the best one is this place right over here that's like you know behind this thing this other one is right over here down this alley this other town like those are the best places it's it's interesting how that works out and it's all over the south that way i think texas does gas station food better than any state i've ever been in in my life i'll say that for sure oh armand you did say that listen i apologize don't hate me more than you already do armand it's cool i love you and quan chi is dope all right, so I think we have a temp talk question. Okay, let's. How do we? Are we scrolling up? Uh, we're, I'm at Gen. We'll stay where you are because I don't want to lose okay. our place. Um, temp talk question. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm. You've already covered this, but could you explain to the new players at home what an option select is? Um, Armand, help me out. Have I answered this yet? I can't remember. <laughs> I think. Maybe I don't remember. Do we, the question is: Did we answer it last time, or the time before? See, we had two guests in a row. I think that's why we're so behind on questions. Um, oh, you're right. We did, didn't we? Okay, listen. Does anyone listening right now do they would they like to know what an option select is? Do you guys not know? Anyone is listening? Okay, right I think we haven't covered this. So, okay, I, I can do this quickly. Um, basically, an option select is when you do an ambiguous input, and the 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 game engine kind of determines which option comes out based on what's more optimal. So for example, Street Fighter 4, I could do uh I could do down back jab, right? That can be good in some situations. Or I could do down back throw if I think I need to take a throw. Well in Street Fighter 4, if you hold down back and press the throw input, what it does is if the person tries to throw you, you get a tech. But if they try to pressure you, you get your jab. So it was very useful in Street Fighter 4 and um I actually kind of like this mechanic because um, throws the throw mechanic in Street Fighter Four is weird. I'm actually glad throws were not that strong in Street Fighter Four because their range and like fucking you can throw people on landing frames. It was so weird, but anyway, um, yeah. So uh, like I, that's one example. Uh, another example is if you did a certain input in, in pre patch MKX, uh, you would get um, an EX move instead of a regular move or vice versa. That got patched out. Um, holding up, you can option select some things in Soul Calibur 2. Uh, you can get a jump in and, and evade throws. Or any, just, basically, you do a, an input that is ambiguous, and you what, you get the um, the more desirable of the two um, of the two potential inputs. That's kind of how it works, right? So now, granted that it's not always going to give you what's optimal. Like for example, you can do an ambiguous input. And the 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 not a good option will come out. What it, that just means we're not. It's not an option select. Um, if you always get the bad option, we just call that a shitty option, right? Um, what made Street Fighter Four so special is it was littered with option selects. So people had setups where they would do their their ultra inputs, and it, it depending on how they in, inputted the ultra, if the character blocked, nothing would come out. If the character did not block, they got an ultra. Abel was famous for this, especially I feel like. Um, 
So yeah, an, an option select is just doing multiple inputs or ambiguous inputs, and the game just gives you the more desirable outcome based on what your opponent does. That, that's how I would explain an option select. And they're very important, and they're in almost all fighting games. And some of them we don't find until over 10 years later. You answered the fuck out of that. I hope so. I, that, that's at least kind of the best way I know how to explain it. So I think smarter know, people can yeah. explain it better, but... I I I think you did it well. I, I think that this episode, we're earning our stripes for calling ourselves the Gameplay Podcast. Talked about hit stops. Talked about option selects. Uh, yeah, this fucking knows we're podcast barbecue. came out beefier than I thought it would be. I thought we were just going to do a little, we were like, hey, Jade was cool, and then we were going straight to questions. I did not realize this was going to be such a packed episode, but it's been great. I've been having a blast. We have feelings, dude. You fucking left for like an hour and did some shit outside, like, you know? Yeah, I may have to do that again soon. There's this dog. Someone's like resurrecting their dog or some shit outside. It's so loud. Um, that sounds really hype. Yeah, there's some alchemy going on outside my balcony, so hopefully that doesn't start up again. But um, that rhymed is pretty dope. Good, good job with that. Did it rhyme? I liked it. Uh, alchemy balcony. Oh shit, yo! That's, that's a good rhyme. That is a good rhyme. Um, oh, we got another question here. Um, oh, God. also from Aramond. Uh, I've heard guys like Eris and Ultra David and James Chen say MK has a chance to gain a lot more players within the FGC and maybe overtake SF Five. In terms of players, do you guys see this happening? I personally don't see it overtaking SF because I don't think the Asian players will get up uh, because of the blood and gore and that MK, that MK is known for. Um, I think there's two really big obstacles to this. Uh, one is that our, our top players are so dominant that we can't incentivize any of the Capcom guys with money. We can't be like, hey, look at our prize pot. Because they're just going to be like, they're going to look at the price spot, then they're going to look at Sonic Fox, they're going to go back to Street Fighter V. That's one problem. <laughs> I would do it too. I don't blame him, man. I don't blame him. That dude's not fucking... Uh... And I... Uh-oh. Yo, go ahead. The dog wants in the room. Go ahead. No, that's cool. I think another problem, the reason why we're having trouble recruiting players is because all the sponsored guys, I think there's this pressure to play Street Fighter V because it's the biggest game. So I think it's kind of like a, or a sort of a catch-22. MK can't get bigger because it's not the bigger game in many ways. I, th I feel like a lot of the sponsorships want the visibility of Street Fighter V. They want that ESPN um, exposure. Uh, and it's just it's hard when someone's paid to do this for a living by a third-party company to say, hey, I want to play this game that hasn't been proven yet. And let's face it, Mortal Kombat hasn't really been proven yet. And, I mean, of course there's a reason you stated is with the violence, we're going to alienate a lot of our audience, which is why I thought they were getting rid of x-rays, so they could uh, turn off blood for bigger viewership, but it looks like that probably won't be the case. I pray that it will be, but we'll see. So I think that's one thing that's holding us back. No. But it's, it's possible. I mean, these are these the obstacles I mentioned are definitely things we are more than capable of overcoming. Like, there's no reason you have to see the inside of someone's rib cage when you do a crushing blow. I feel like that's a very easy fix. Just get rid of the zoom. I mean, and problem solved, right? But um, I I don't think they're gonna do it. I hope they do, but you're right. I don't think they will either. I feel like they spend a lot of time and money on those things, and uh, they want to show you that tech. Wow. Oh, so that that's it's my answer. Tech. Um. <laughs> oh, what's up? What tech? What? No, no, no. You're right. You're right. Yes. Okay, and we got one from Christmas Mel. Oh, by the way, thank you for the questions, Armand, because those are super good questions. And I feel like yep, we're sort of man. in the, the the border between the gameplay and the lore guys, and you know it's kind of our job to kind of connect those wires sometimes. But the threshold, it's right here, dude. Uh, Christmas Milk asks, do you think Fatal Blows will have the same negative stigma as X Rays in tournament and in the tournament scene uh, for being a long cutscene in the middle of a fight? I don't think so because thankfully Street Fighter Four already kind of fucked this up for us, and. Um, the anime games also are really big on cinematic supers and whatnot. And uh, and they're in Tekken. It's not like fucking Rage Arts are these fast animation sequences. Some of those Rage Arts take fucking forever. Like, like Dragonov just hits you on the head and fucking stares you down for like five seconds and feels like, um, yeah, so um, I don't think it'll be a problem. I think the bigger backlash is going to be the availability 
I think they're going to happen a lot, and they're going to happen a little more often, which is why I like the ones per match. Um, but I, I think from a gameplay perspective, I don't think people are going to have a problem with them. I think from a viewer perspective, in time, I, at least initially, no. I don't think in the early tournament days of MK11, we're going to have a big backlash against the viewership of uh, Fatal Blows, but we'll see. What do you, what do you think, Django? I think you're absolutely right. Um, it's a lot harder for me to imagine people getting um, annoyed or, you know, frustrated with what having to watch Fatal Blows because um, they, well, I, for me, I always felt like the biggest thing with X-rays and shit was like, they just weren't useful. So if you were seeing it, like it's probably for something stupid anyway. Like someone's going to, whatever, like you just weren't fucking useful. But here they mean some shit. And if you don't do it well, that means some shit too. And you can only do it once. Um, all that stuff rolled into a thing is, it, in, in my opinion, makes it better, uh, more interesting. And especially if they incorporate it in some sick way, like doing a, like, fucking crushing blow into, into fail blow shit, or it's like, you know, you could, there's combo potential there for some hype shit. I feel like it has enough gameplay uh, relevancy to, to, to not bug people. It has more of a reason for being there now, uh, and it hella didn't before. Agreed. I think, I think you're absolutely right about the, uh, just about the viewership potential, just what kind of cool shit can now happen that couldn't happen before. Like, when people see the life bar get to the Fatal Blow um, level, I think it's like 30%, like, the viewership is going to be like, oh my god, what's about to happen? It, you know, is it going to land? Is it not going to land? Is it going to get stuffed? So I, I think that kind of viewership mentality is going to be a lot of fun. And that may hold up forever. People may never never get tired of that, uh, of watching that meta unravel. So, yeah, so far so good. Appreciate the question, Christmas, Mel. Absolutely. Um, I'm I, I'm I'm looking myself down here for when the thing. I think we're I think back we're back to now. we're back to January twenty eighth now. Okay. Well, well, we did. Um. Yeah. After that one, we all like the next question was the three from the different franchises, one yeah. character from each of the three franchises, which we did that. Um. So I think we're on January 29th. Got a random question for you guys. If you could take one... Oh, yeah. You're right. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that was that one. And we... Everyone had fun answering that one. I, I did not pick Yoshimitsu twice. Good shit. Um, I like it. That didn't happen. Uh, Cicelito... Oh. It's a friend of his does is going to buy the game because Rhonda voiced it. Well, that's good data. And bad choice in friends, but good data. <laughs> it's not terribly like surprising, it. but yeah, I, I could see well, it. I mean, that is the, just the thing that was like on my mind. Like, you know, who is this for? Like, is, is somebody going to go out and buy MK11 just for Ronda Rousey? Like, yeah, apparently that is that. I still can't imagine that demographic is huge. Like, that's got to be a tiny, tiny slice on the pie pie chart. But, you know. Warner Brother care. Warner Brothers care about every slice. Uh... So now we're at Cartuthalo. Um, with Chronica confirmed not to be playable, who do you guys think is the unlockable secret character or characters? Oh, and by the First way, thank you for the I, question, I, I... Sassolino. Definitely appreciate. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I haven't heard your opinion about that. Temp, are you? Are, how do you? Are, are you happy or sad or who cares about? Uh, Kronika being unplayable. I think it's a fantastic trade. I have nothing against Kronika. But if someone said, hey, dude, would you liquidate Kronika to get another roster slot? It's an instant yes. I don't even need to think about it. So, yeah. If someone said, hey, Temp, do you want to take this new character and get rid of it for a potential roster slot? Yes! Absolutely! Yep. Every single time. That is the correct answer. You did, you did well. <laughs> That's... GG's. Can't hide my um, feelings, I do, right? I do have things against Kronika, but I also would obviously liquidate that slot. AF. Like, get out of here, 
fucking there's way more cool characters coming here than your bland bald ass first Takeda. <laughs> Hopefully around. We'll and, see. and and with the with the move set, you know the time shit and whatever. Like, uh, Gyrus is already doing some of that. The dude doing that shit. Like, eh, I mean, you know, you already got one bald time manipulating character in the game. Man, I was so scared Jade was gonna be bald. I was terrified Jade was gonna be fucking bald, dude. I was like, please. Why don't the me. fuck would you think is she? I don't bald? know. I don't know. But like, everyone's fucking bald in this game, so I didn't know what to fucking think, dude. So. <laughs> I'm so glad she has beautiful flowing hair. She looks amazing. There's no way that she would ever be bald. Well, I mean, I mean Kung Lao I mean, lost his hair when he became a revenant. Oh, who knows, man? Well, that was weird. And he lost his hair again when yeah. he became young. Like it doesn't. Anyway, Did he? yeah, he's bald again. Young MK2 Kung Lao is bald. Wait, MK2 Kung Lao in MK11? Well, no, no, MK11 Kung Lao young. MK Trilogy Kung Lao is bald again. Oh my god. You didn't know this? this He's good. super fucking bald. This is, this is tough. I don't even I still don't know which game you're talking about. It's MK11. I'm really All versions in, of Kung uh, Lao and MK11 are bald. So like the red, white, and blue cabal of I mean Kung Lao. Kung Lao, yeah. That we've seen. He's yes. bald. Man, okay. Okay. I I I think I've got it. And I'm also glad that people have some hair. Yeah, no, I, Man, some I, I were pissed about okay, balls here. Better than I thought I would. Whew. All kinds of drama over that shit. I like, uh, I really like Scorpion's uh, tied back bun. I think that shit's sick. I um, think that covers the questions up till February second, because the rest of it is just people you're praising right. your um, uh, your remixes that got plugged. Huh? Hey, yeah. What happened? Oh, uh, read down, read down to. Uh... I didn't see that. Yeah, the, uh, February first, dude. Oh, I saw that. Okay. 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 I'm caught up now. Yeah. yeah. Some of, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, people's nice. I'm Dude, I'm sorry. Listen, my brain's... Boy, that took me way too long to figure out what's going on. I even responded to it here. Okay. Okay. Listen. I'm caught up. Okay. I've downloaded the patch. We're good. Do you want to read the next question from Armand? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sliding down from. It's right below your smile, your blushing smiley face. I have never posted a blushing smiley face. Why did I do that? <laughs> um, Armand asks, which will be the best place to play MK11? At home, or in the room, or in the living room? You know, I, I I personally like in the room. That's my preference. I think I think this question is a little too limiting. I'm not going to be playing this game in just one of those locations. I'm going to move around. Um, I'm going to be playing it definitely at home, <laughs> and I'm definitely going to be playing it sometimes in the living room. Those are not compatible answers, sir, because the living room um, is not in your home per this question. I'm gonna be playing it in both. Dude, I I'm I i i did not say it's in my home. I will be playing it in the room for sure because this is this is making me struggle again. Listen, I can't fucking uh, keep up with Ono oh uh <laughs> mix ups. Okay? This this, this shit's too um, I'm gonna. I'll be playing it in the room as well. I think. I think you're right. Yeah, my living room is reserved for Xbox racing games that I don't play. I definitely also don't play Xbox racing games or any racing games. Maybe I should. Nah, I don't. I think usually if I'm playing anything in the living room, it's probably gonna be something like this where I'm just labbing while something else is going on. That, okay. that, that that's usually what happens well I think we've all drawn our line I think we both know we're going to be playing in the room so yeah thank you for the question Armand Kage anyway um, let's see I got him it worked on me I didn't even know what he was saying I bought him Man, yeah, that's good. effective I don't know it's good okay where are we at Um, there's a, a oh, lot of casual time. chat <laughs> It's so good. Oh my god, is I love it's, that. It's good. It's a good one. I man. watched it like seven times in a row. I was laughing the whole time. Like I feel like my immune system was actively improving as I was watching that video. He's just got so much charisma and one dude. Like it's just fucking infectious. He's so hype. And he's probably old. 
Oh, I got another good question from Armand. How sad is it that the farming simulator will have a league with $208,000 in prize money, but the Tekken World Finals only had $7,500? <sighs> you know, yeah. How do you feel about this, dude? This... I'm actually not that bent about it. I actually think this is perfect. This is not a negative reflection on farming simulators, nor do I even think it's a negative reflection on Tekken World Finals. If anything, um... I just feel like Tekken needs a little time to catch up. I don't feel like I don't feel like the Tekken World Tour has been around long enough to set a high money precedent yet. I still feel like they're a little new at this. So I know people are pissed about seventy five hundred. Let's give them a little more time. I, I I feel like another year is warranted before we really judge Namco because I don't really think they know what they're doing yet, and I don't think I mean where does that money come from? I mean look how long it took them to pay for DLC, right? I don't know what their budget is. So um, I think the real tragedy here is there are players saying that they're dropping off the tour for next year because the money incentive just is non-existent. So I'm actually very happy for our farming simulator brothers. I have no problem. But um, I just think Tekken needs more time. I think they need to prove themselves to Namco first. I think Harada needs to show that there is a working project here. Because right now, a lot of these big money esports competitions are not proven. This money is going to go into some random dude with glasses pocket. He's going to walk away, and there no one is going to get their investment back in this shit. This farming simulator shit, the joke's on them, because this is going to fucking fall apart probably within a year or so, at, at most. Um, so I, I, at least I know we're not, you know, running on, you know, on, on an empty gas tank here, because I feel like a lot of esports are blowing up too quickly. And at least, you know, that $7,500 is real. And it's, it's, it, there's a reasonable future to build on there. Like these other, because Capcom Cup is the exception to the rule. There's a lot of money in Capcom Cup because Capcom kind of figured out how to how to use the channel their revenue into a way where they could have a long lasting annual Shout tournament. Shout out to Capcom. Oh, fuck me. I, I do it. Well done. Anyway, so this farming simulator, simulator shit, it's not tested. No one really knows how much money this is going to bring in. So I, I wish there was more money for Tekken players. And if there isn't in the future, then yes, this is a blow up. But I still feel like they're testing the waters and trying to figure out, you know, what's, <clears throat> excuse me, what's real. And, uh, you know, how much they can afford to make this happen. And it's, it's, it, now's the time to do it because they haven't tried it with Soul Calibur yet. And Dragon Ball is still, they're still trying to work that out as well. So, and those tournaments were just getting randomly canceled. So, they, it, it's all part of the experiment. I'm not too butthurt about it. I lament the fact that very talented Tekken players are not getting the money they deserve, and it should be bigger. Like, 7,500 is pathetic. Don't get me wrong. But let's give them a chance, though. That's kind of my stance right now. At least it's a real working experiment, and it's not this implosive $280,000 for a crop game. Like, that's for a fucking cornfield game. Yeah, that, at least this is being tested. No one has any idea they're getting their investment back on that farm simulator bullshit. And Damn. That concludes my thoughts on farming simulators having $208,000 in prize money. I mean, where else are people going to get, like, this kind of analysis? You know? On Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're going to make me cry over here. It's, uh... Listen, this is good. This is good shit, dude. Man, I mean, we're already kind of seeing it with sponsorships, like Echo Fox, which was the big shit. What, like, what, six months ago? It's Boy. now fucking dead. Like, they lost all their good players almost. I think Sonic Fox actually left Echo Fox. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sonic. Hold on, let me Google this um, before I say something really fucking stupid. Uh... Sell, sell, sell. It's going down, dude. It's over. They're gone. Okay, maybe Sonic, Sonic Fox. Fox did not leave Echo Fox. I'm not sure. Did he, did he not? I thought... I didn't think he did. I wanted to believe, though, because... Someone needs to dump that guy. Okay, well, I know Justin Wong left, for sure. But I know they cut a lot of their best players. Some of them were performing. I think, like, um... JDCR got cut? I'm like, dude, that guy was killing... Anyway, so... Yeah, like, we're seeing sponsorships fall apart, and I think we're starting to see more and more esports does not have the, the stable foundation that we hoped it had. I don't think anyone thought it did have that. 
except for maybe the sponsors themselves. But I think it, the cracks are showing now. So that's all I got on that. It's a good question. Definitely appreciate it. But yeah, Sonic Fox is not lefty. I was wrong about that. Justin Wong, uh, Sherry Genix, and there's one other really big one. And I, I want to say, is it Knuckle Deuce? Uh, Victrix just sponsored a bunch of really good players. So I think, um, and I, I love that company. I love their sick designs. I can't afford any of them. I think their six designs are really sick. Um, we'll definitely invest in arcade stick for them in the future. So yeah, um, appreciate the question, dude. Did you want anything you want to add before we move on? No, nope, I think you nailed it. Well, thank you, sir. You did a great job. Uh, oh, well, Echo I Fox that... just picked up Knuckle nope. Dew. Okay. So that's a plus on there. This style. just in. <laughs> Information coming into the Warrior Shrine Studios hot. Did you know Jay Wong is a father now, says Aramont? I did not. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Congratulations to him. He's He will always be one of my favorite fighting game players. He's definitely in my top three. God, that is weird to think about. One of my favorite oh my top eights of all I'm time is uh, Evo Marvel vs. Capcom 3. When Justin Wong did the whole Return of the King bit after he won, like that was so epic. But, but anywho, yeah, that's t- super sick. He looks like a baby. <laughs> and he had a baby. <laughs> Listen, yeah, Jay Wong. Sure, give us some trouble, fan, dude. dude. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Jay Wong, dude. That dude, dude. But he, come, okay, fine. <laughs> he doesn't look like a baby. He doesn't look like a baby. Big fan. I love Jay Wong. I think it's sick. That fucking Mortal Kombat Nine tournament he entered, that PDP one when <laughs> Vegas. Oh yeah, and also when he bodied everyone at Canada Cup. <laughs> fucking every, like, dude. When that game came out, everyone was like, "Just fucking, I learned how to do kung lao spin. Give me this fucking tournament. I got this shit." And they were right. It's hilarious. He wrecked everyone with Raiden at Canada Cup, and after he won for his uh, when he was interviewed, he's like, "This game fucking sucks." That is why he's uh, was the best, dude. That's why he's, he's testing Power Rangers. <laughs> Is he really testing Power Rangers? I heard yes, that. that. Did is you true. tell me that, yeah. Crumblefoot? He is part of the balancing team for Power Rangers, yes. Damn, that game is going to be fucking... Dude, are you going to buy it? Do we need to change reels, by the way? Uh, Don't change the subject. <laughs> I, just, I just had a, a flash of... They're... We're good. Okay, okay, cool. All right, cool. We're good. I, 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 are you going to buy Power Rangers? Dude, Power Rangers? No, I'm not going to buy it, dude. Dude... We bought Owen of Sorrow. How are we not going to buy Power Rangers when we bought Owen of Sorrow? Oh, I'm a dude, no, I'm not. It's not because I have anything against Power Rangers. I don't have any history with Power Rangers, but I'm not. I, I like colors a lot, right? Colors are great. Colors are in Power Rangers. I can play that. Uh, yeah, they are. I'm not buying it because I need to put all my April time into fucking Mortal Kombat 11. That is why I'm not buying it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Frumblefoot's right. I, I think he has the right of it. Um, and if they got <laughs> if they got Jay Wong labbing Power Rangers over there, dude, it's the game might be sick. And we're not gonna. Why is it coming out in April? I, he had to say something, right? Because even if they even if the devs didn't know, he knows. That's a weird move on their part. I don't agree. I wish someone would do that and save them. It's another save American the fighting game company, company, too. It's like, how do they it not is. know? How do they not fucking know? I want them to do well. Believe me. I w- Listen. Like, someone needs to write an open letter to them saying, hey, listen, just delay your game 60 days. Just please. Just listen. It, it, listen you're, yeah, yeah. Or 60 days sooner. That's probably harder, but... Is your 60 days before MK11 comes out? I don't know the math. Oh, I'm fuck it. And I'm asking I think there's like 72 for... days or something like that. Ooh, it's cutting it close. They can do it. Either way, it would be much better than coming out in April. It's a dumb move. I wish somebody would save them. Somebody go back in time. Well, I mean... Uh, save the Power Rangers. Get the time force. <laughs> I mean, think about it, dude. Like, fucking... 60 days. What's going to be happening? All the dumb kids in high school are—they're going to be done with story mode in MK11. 
Uh, they're going to be done <laughs> unlocking the last coffin after they earn all their money and test your kicks or some shit like that, right? Um, and then they're like, oh, I'm bored. I'm so tired of Katana. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, a new Power Rangers came out. I want to play the green one. And the fuck you make bank, dude. It's like, it's easy. It seems so straightforward to me, but Listen, I don't know. You know, as well as I do, that dumb high school kids... You were just talking about Razor. Yes, and, and... <laughs> you did a really good job talking about Razor. That that actually fits in nice story mode. What am I gonna do? Power Rangers, like it, all three of it. Oh, yeah. I see where you're going with this now. Mm-hmm. Them high school kids means Razor. I I, <laughs> I understand the code. I see what you're saying. I think everyone would win, myself included. If they would just delay the game a reasonable amount of time. At least let people Absolutely. get their early regionals out of the way, right? Um, Absolutely. Wait for fucking um, wait for Texas Showdown to be over. Wait for final round. Well, final round is actually going to be more, that's not going to be Mortal Kombat's not going to be out by the time final round happens. Um, let Cabo Breaker finish up, then release your fucking Power Rangers game. That's why. Yeah, absolutely. After Combo Breaker, like they know, they just didn't listen. All right, we and may have to wrap this up it. soon. By the way, um, maybe we have time for maybe two more questions. All right, we can do it. Let's talk to uh, Aramond. Good. Yeah, question. thank you for the question, dude. And um, well, who asked the Power Rangers we... question? Was that uh, was that Armand or was that uh, that was that was this motherfucker over here? Just Rumblefoot. Oh, okay. No, thank just you for squeezing the... this in here off the record, dude. <laughs> cutting in line. <laughs> just po posting funny shit. Yeah. Um, yes, these Power Ranger gifs are are, are are top tier. I like them. Thank you for the question, Mister Foot. Green Ranger's top is, is sick, dude. I really want him in Injustice Three. I, I want it. I like that shade of green. That's like a good muted shade of green. I like it. It's not quite meant. Yeah. No. Yeah, ooh, winter fresh? Hmm. Getting there. Okay, listen. Listen, it's focus. Yeah, if you get uh, too Lord... blue, if you if you if you mute the green too much, you get into like Miami Dolphins territory, so I'll do that. You're not into the Dolphins? You're not a Dolphins fan? Uh no, I'm a Dan Reno fan, but that's only because of Ace Ventura. I watch Ace Ventura. I know about that shit. I fucking heard the whole story. Uh, Einhorn. You know, we're actually old enough where we could spoil, like, Finkel for a fucking new generation. We're actually old enough to ruin Ace Ventura for a bunch of people. <laughs> we're so fucking do old. Think, do you think I... Listen, I have not thought about how old I am all day <laughs> and then you brought that up. Um, yeah, Finkel, Einhorn, Einhorn, Finkel. I'm just saying... <laughs> just saying that's a perfect way to say uh, it too because that builds the mystery and unless you unless you've seen the movie there's no way anyone can know what that means but just saying you know listen think about it okay um Lord Sheebus asks uh thank you for the question put. Yeah, I feel like sure. that's something that we do every time we start the next question and then quickly thank the last guy and then continue I like our this old system how... where we just thanked Evan for every question we got I feel like that was so much easier oh I forgot about that strip yeah, that one was really, really effective, actually. Let me go back to doing that. One. Uh, thanks, Evan. Um, Lord Chivas asks, uh, do you think Aaron Black is secretly working or used to work for Kronika? I have a huge ass theory. Uh, damn it, I missed the joke. God damn it. I, there's, I should have left the pause. I have a huge ass theory, theory about this. <laughs> it actually makes a lot of sense. Okay. He did not share his huge ass or his theory. I mean, I, I think so I infer. we're just going to have to take his word for it that it makes a lot of sense. I, I think I know where he's going with this. I think the idea is the reason why Aaron Black is like over 100 years old and he hasn't aged is because potentially he worked for Kronika. So maybe that's where he's going with it. Mm, I mean, I mean, yeah, that does seem to be the... But... I thought that he was working with Shang Tsung. Was that another theory? I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about that. But that I could just be out of the loop on that. He's a fucking uh, inter, not international, in, interrealmer, interrealmer man of mystery. Aaron Black, you don't, you don't know anything. We fucking don't know anything. Is the Lone Wolf? We don't fucking know anything about that guy. Did you see that fucking <laughs> stupid idea I was talking about the other day in the chat about starting a podcast? Are they a ninja? 
<laughs> no, I did not read that. And we just go through being like, you know, is this is is whatever character is this a ninja? It's like a ten minute show, if that. Uh, obviously, like Aaron Black is one of the best ones, one of the best ones. And uh, the answer is yes, Aaron Black is a ninja. He's a World Combat ninja. We got more than one in that in MKX, and every game should introduce at least one new Mortal Kombat ninja. That's my personal. Works for me. I, I have no objection. Um, but I do think it's probable he's. I I mean I I would hope he's not working for Kotal and then is a double agent. I think that'd be really boring. I would hope if he's working for Kotal, it always stays with Kotal. And then he, I don't know, he, there's no reason Aaron Black cannot be a good character. Not not literally good, but there's no reason why he can't be paid to help the good guys. I feel like that's a very smart business move. Just bring in the money, hire Aaron Black, you've solved a big problem. Because not only do you have the assistance of Aaron Black, you no longer have to fight Aaron Black. Problem solved, right? So, so wait, 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 are you, are you, are, are you arguing that uh, he's a, like a decent person? No, I'm arguing he'd be an easy protagonist. I feel like he makes more sense as a protagonist. Okay. You gotta bring that money. Okay. You're good. Yeah, yeah. If he works for Kronika, Listen. it's like that. Does Kronika have bison dollars? Like, what is she gonna do for Aaron Black? It just doesn't make any sense. But it, the, well, the time I mean, thing works, but that's about all. To... I think you're right. No, no, I think you're right. I think, um, I don't like that. I don't I I I I don't like the theory of the collusion between Aaron Black and Kronika. I I I think there's other theories out there that are more compelling and I would like to go with those. Um Armand, by the way, listen. Um he is a ninja, but you're going to have to tune into that show <laughs> are they a ninja? Um for me to explain why. That's a very important part of that show. Uh there are reasons and he's not listen. It's not is he a ninja? It's, is he a Mortal Kombat ninja? There's a big difference. Look at Ermac. Motherfucker is a, you know, a fucking, you know, wizard, basically, these days. Like, that's what his deal is. He's, he's, he's a ninja. Listen. Yeah, he's a wizard mummy. He's, uh, yeah. He's a wizard mummy, but he's also a ninja. Works for me. And Aaron Black is, too. Okay, thank you for the... Okay, that was a question, Lord Chivas. Yeah, yes, that was a question. Thank you for, question, thank you for it. Um, Ishi, going by a different name, but I'm going to call him Ishi because he's Ishi. Question for Big Jengus. That is a new nickname to me. I like that one a lot. That one's good. And they all, they are all good. Usually, I can't remember a bad one. Uh, Big Jengus. Um, do you think they'll eventually? Add subs ice clone traditionally as a special in the final build with enough people complaining, or do you think they won't just wait? If you don't think they won't, just in terms of the direction for the character in this game, hell, Tim can answer that too since he played sub MKX as well. Tim did not fucking play a sub zero with a clone MKX, and you complained about it a lot. Um, as I think everyone did like if you weren't a clone user you were a clone complainer um for good reason to answer his question i do not think they're gonna add the ice clone i think the ice clone is gonna sit this game out even though like you know i would i i, I would love to imagine it being on like you know dlc combat pack 2 there's the clone like i want that to happen but I don't know. I think I, I don't. I don't think it's going to be in here this time. What do you think? I that used to be my stance for. I think all, through, for all of January and part of February, that was my stance as well. However, I've kind of had a semi change of heart on that just because um, it sound the more I hear people talk about the the January seventeenth event, it sounds like there is the intent to release more abilities over time. So. Yeah, it, I did hear it's that. Yeah, weird that you would release new abilities for sub, and people want the ice clone, and one of those abilities is not the ice clone. So I'm wondering if the main reason it's not in the game right now was because they didn't want to worry about balancing it yet. Like, let's wait until we know, make sure the game works. Then once we know what kind of ecosystem we've created, we'll throw a clone in there, and that'll be one of the new abilities. That's what I think is going on. I think yeah, I, th I think you could be right, and I. I, I make jokes about the Ice Clone being like, you know, Combat Pack 2 DLC or whatever. I think the... 
Heist Clone is like a move with enough notoriety and enough infamy that like if it was DLC, like it would get hype. Like that would people would talk about it. For better or for worse, like they'd be pissed, like they'd be hype, or they would, you know, just like people whatever. It's what it's it's there's nothing there's not many moves that carry that kind of uh fervor one way or the other, um, as the Ice Clone. The Ice Clone is a Listen, it's a big deal. I definitely don't have Razor's attitude. We're like, it should be there because he's always had it. Uh, that's not how I feel about it. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel that way about legacy moves necessarily, and I've said it a billion times. I agree with what Tom Brady has said about why, about maybe why it's not in the game. Um, he's right about what it does, but I also think there is a way to do the Ice Clone that works for this Mortal Kombat, for this game. I think there's a way to do it, but uh, as people say here in the chat, um, you don't have to do it now. They can do it later, and it would be hype. So, I agree. Like, yeah, like, a, a pack of variations, and, like, you know, if they did that, one of the poster moves would be the Ice Clone. Like, that would get fucking people talking. Like, a DLC variation move pack. Yeah, that'd be hype. I would, and I would get hyped to see it. I think it's interesting. I think the way to please everyone is just to make it expensive. I think you could balance Ice Clone in this game. I mean, for the most part, they were able to balance Ice Clone in MK9 with very few matchup exceptions. Um, but I think if you really want Ice Clone back, the easy way to balance it, make it take up two bars of defensive meter. I yeah. think that's a great way to balance it because A, you still have a lot of your amplify options if you decide to go in. Um, although that was my idea. You use two bars of defensive meter, and you could use a bar of your offensive meter to throw the thing or to shatter the thing, right? So um, I feel like if you do that, once the clone dissipates, they don't get cloned again until they get both defensive meters back. And if you have a character that can bypass clone with, like, say, a teleport, like smoke, well, dude, now you've thrown out a clone and you have no defensive meter and smoke is behind you now. So, yeah, balanced. I think I think you just did it. Um well, I mean, I don't know. I think you just killed it, too. Oh, well, I it mean, sounds, uh, you, I'm not giving it a chance know. to live. I, I know it's shitty. What? I, it's not shitty. It's just situational. Like, if we're, you use a clone in very specific circumstances, like in the corner. Like, if my character does not, if my opponent does not have a teleport, and I have them in the corner, I will fucking spend two bars of defensive meter to get a clone out. That is a good investment. And just now you only get one chance. That means if your corner setup works, you don't get to throw out another clone. That's the difference. It's still good. It's just expensive. Yep. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm, I'm. That's like you know, that's the obvious choice. That that that's the easy stuff. Like, oh, you make it work. Make it spend like you know, like you said, two bars of uh, defensive meter, like whatever. Like, and that's just one example, and a, and a, a good example, a, a probably an effective example, um, of a way to, uh get the ice load in this game that makes sense that doesn't break stuff that keeps the pacing they're wanting the kind of game they're wanting um uh, uh uh yeah there's a lot of ways they can do it that's that's just one I can think of a million other ones and I don't want to say any of them because I don't want to give them ideas yeah that's the, the solution I presented is the only one that would make me happy but I don't want any more 10 matchups with Sub-Zero I don't feel like a high mid-tier character should 10 anybody because that's fucking ridiculous. Like, God, there was so yeah. many hard matchups against fucking Glone. So, yeah, that's my and thought. I'm not going to be, you know, super butthurt. It's not in the game anyway. Like, so that's why I'm not too interested in, you know, conjecturizing and figuring out ways to get it in. And if it's in, then cool. But if it's not, fine. Like, he's got a lot of other shit that I think is interesting in this game. Um, and the Arctic Trap is okay. I guess, whatever. I'll play around with it. I'll check it out, see if it's good. Smoke Tele MKX will get you frozen. Dude, smoke. I don't want to think about smoke. And some idiots out there are going to be like, Tenno is hyperbole temp. Shut the fuck up. It is not hyperbole. Because Jack's Grandmaster was 7 3. And Jack's had viable zoning tools. Cryomancer didn't have shit. I had fucking armored slide, which at best gave me a knockdown that I often couldn't do anything with. Um, yeah, no, that was that was a 10 0 match. Some people say, well, it, maybe it's, it's worse than 7 3, but maybe it's an 8 2. 8 2 matchups are not real, they're fucking fiction. 
There is no agreed upon definition of 8-2. It's 10-0. Just cut the shit. It's fucking 10-0. Anyway. <laughs> I like the clone. I like talking about the clone. It's fun, All man. these reasons you're hearing are why I think it would be uh, make a lot of sense for them to hold it out for uh, DLC variations. You got to pay to clone. I, uh... Pay to clone. I don't think they'll charge for abilities. I think they're going to come with seasons. That's my theory. I think you're right. I think they'll probably roll it out like they did the classic costumes in KX. Season's not even the right um, word. I think the complete edition will bring in the new abilities, and that will be... We'll just get one wave of new abilities that'll change the game, so we'll get, you know, Super Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition or some shit like that. Super MK11? That would be uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 11. I, with the clone... Yeah. I'd buy it. That sounds good. It sounds like fun. Um... What do you think? You want to do another one? Nah, I feel like we should call it, dude. It's getting out late. Yeah, we should call it a night. That's a good one to wrap it on. I think so, too. Uh, the, the boy. Listen, everybody else, we're coming for you. (laughs) All these questions. We're getting there, man. We did talk about Jade for a while. It's all good, though. I'm glad you're hyped for her. Yeah, I mean, I mean, until I see otherwise, based on the leak list, this is my character now. And I think I did okay. I think I got a pretty good character. Um, I don't know how competitive I'm going to take this game because I I got let's face it, she's like my eighth favorite character. You know, it doesn't really inspire me to go out into tournaments when you didn't even get someone in your top five. But we'll see. I'm I'm open minded. I'm going to play the character. She, in terms of raw gameplay, she's everything I want out of a character, at least right now. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Uh, there's there's so much tension right now because of the roster, the alleged roster. Um, Which is why I'm glad on the Shrine we don't have to talk about roster speculation. There's really no, no fighting it on the Nethercast because that's our bread and butter. But here we can just talk about gameplay and talk about shit we actually know things about, and I love it. Yeah, I mean, you know... I, I, Oh, absolutely, Armand. I'm definitely going to Texas Showdown. I, I got the hotel and shit and everything already. I'm talking to the chat, by the way, listeners. So if you, if, I, if I do random remarks like that, that's why. <laughs> yes. Uh, fucking Armand just interrupting with his post. I think they know the drill. I think the listeners know what <laughs> goes do. on here now. <laughs> they know we do the show live. Uh, listen, man, it's nothing new. Um, we what time is it? Two fifty in the a.m. Listen, even if we were just hearing interjections from nowhere on brains, give us a break. It's fine. Um, and one of the reasons why I want to cut it short now is so I can watch Evo Japan. <laughs> oh yeah, they got to fucking see what not Ono is saying in Japanese English. Um, dude, Spooky and Markman are doing commentary for Soul Calibur right now, man. That's hey, that's pretty cool. Spooky and Markman, Spooky, I haven't seen anything with him in a while. He's had a bit of a resurgence, dude, but, uh... Yeah, um... He's been missed. Spooky. Forgot about that guy for a minute. Spooky? Oh, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped, too. Air Mind type. I'm hype. Go check it out. Uh, what the... F- where is that? Where's the... Is there a link? I can provide one for sure. Uh, let's see. It's just fucking... Whoa, that was fast. So I'm, I'm watching Evo Japan right now. Uh, I, I never should have doubted you. Um, <laughs> to be fair, I've been watching it for like 25 seconds. It's, you know, it's, it's fine. <sighs> I don't know what we do to ever wrap these things up. I think we've they done just a good job so far. I think we're... we're they just uh, kind of go... I, I'm, we're going to just talk over each other, and I'm going to trip and fall on my face. Dust in the wind, you know? Uh, who's Dust? Dustin? Who's Dustin? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Absolutely. Good question, Dustin. Um, yeah, we're going to get to the rest of these. We're not going to delete them. Tim uh, told me not to. And so last time, I'm just trying to make a quick mental note so I can... I, I get we sentimental. Ended, we ended on the, 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 end, uh, the ishy clone gate. Yeah, okay, I got it. It's in the brain. Um, we gotta jump back in here and do the rest of these sometime soonish, and maybe by then there will be a new character to talk about. If there's not, we can talk about 
I would like to give uh, a quick shout out if we have time. No, we don't have time. Okay, cool. Shout outs. Are you crazy? No. What do we? What do you got? What's going on? <laughs> dude, we got some great chat names since uh, MK11 started picking up steam, dude. Um, no one will ever beat Ah uh, Shark. That's still the best name in our Discord. <laughs> But um, I have not seen these. I'm scrolling through here now. They're making me look. Bill Clinton Two Revelations is a close second, though. That's a really good fucking name. <laughs> that shit. is I really like fucking sick. I'm a big Bill Clinton fan, you know. And then, oh, yeah, he, Arkansas, he, of course. He's another juicy Arkansas export of ours, you know. Yeah, it's tight. Saxophone. Local treasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's sick. Um, was that your shout out? Yeah, that is my shout out. Shout outs to Bill Clinton. We usually don't get political in the shrine, but it's a first time for everything. I have mixed feelings Listen, on Mr. Clinton, but we'll get into that. I think everyone day. does. I think everyone I think everyone does and everyone should. He's a complicated man. You should be mixed on your feelings. Um, a lot of history behind that guy. God, he's sexy, isn't he? Um <laughs> He looks the same actually. It's weird. He looks the same as he did in like nineteen ninety eight. It's so weird to me. And he's still smiling. He's got that fucking smile. Like he's, you know, he's fucking <laughs> Clinton troll face. He knows what, what fucking waiting on him in the in the fucking uh, tour bus after the show. He knows what's going on. By the way, guys, I, I we've heard the plea on timestamps. I'm um, I'm getting to it. I'll we'll try to make it a priority. It will take a few days, but I will try to timestamp our episodes for y'all now. We gotta, yeah. I I, I keep wanting to do that too. It's. Uh, it's a little harder, like uh, than than I, I would have thought for these things because we are so we're very usually fluid already. from one thing yeah. into the next thing. So it's like, when does the next thing start exactly? But sometimes they do start. Um, like here, for example, we should put a time stamp on when Temp disappeared in the middle of it, and when I thought it was dead. There was some canine necromancy going outside my apartment. I couldn't help it. Uh, yeah, the balcony alchemy. We heard that. Oh, show. that's right. Shit. That, that should be the name of this episode. I'm probably going to name it that. It's a, Temp it's the Rap episode. God? It was pretty sick. It is some Rap God <laughs> shit, yeah. Um, okay, listen. It's getting anyway. late. These guys that are in here, in the live recording, I'm sure that you're all uh, drunk or asleep, or both. Uh, we know Lando Max asleep, he told us. Um, and I don't blame you a bit. It's fine. It's, uh, you know what? Listening to us talk while you go to sleep and while you are asleep is much better than a lot of things you could listen to. Um, uh oh, I woke Lando Mac up. Shit. He's <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> back. All right, um, cool. What, listen, thank all of you guys for staying up in here and listening. For real. Recording. I agree with that. Thank you so much, guys. And, uh, you know, you guys on YouTube too. Thanks for listening. If you want to come and hang out and trip us up with your fucking questions, you know, it's not hard to do. Come ask us a question. Ruin our days. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm going to this have is fun. my favorite part. This is easily my favorite aspect of this show. I like it way more than talking to like D4 or whatever the fuck. No, he's good. We talked about Bloodborne a lot last week. Yeah, uh, dude. Like that would have been like a seven hour episode had we just kept recording. That was a lot of fun that night. And I was sicker. I was like dying and shit. And they were all talking about like Bloodborne. It was fucking great. Oh yeah, and I'm glad you're feeling better. That reminds me. Oh yeah, me. thank you. I do appreciate that. Listen, we fucking need a strong temp. We need a healthy temp, a strong temp in here for all this fucking shit we got coming up. Thank you guys for listening. Happy Evo Japan, guys. Bye everybody. No. No. no.